college football season stranger than a Stephen King novel. The Oklahoma State Cowboys will try to clockwork orange the unbeaten Kansas Jayhawks. Coach Mike Gundy is looking for the kind of effort Illinois got an upsetting number one Ohio State today. But the big man in the Big 12, Jayhawk coach Mark Mangino, has a few tricks up his ample sleeve tonight. What goes around comes around. And this season, someone's opened up a whole case of karma in Kansas. The Jayhawks, perennial doormats in the Big 12, have been piling up points while settling scores, staying unbeaten, and in the hunt for the conference title in a BCS bid. Tonight, a true test as the fired up Oklahoma State Cowboys are set for a showdown. Under the lights in Stillwater, Kansas, it's time for your close up on Saturday Night Football. You are looking live at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Unbeaten Kansas will attempt to escape the rash of upsets which have turned this season upside down. We welcome you to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Welcome and good evening everybody with Lisa Salters and my man Kirk Herbstreit. I'm Brett Buster. Kirk knew all along that we'd reach mid-November, the only two unbeatens left would be Kansas and Hawaii, right? Of course. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Who are these Jayhawks? Anyhow, uh, Brent. Brent, you and I have been watching this team all year long, and it's a bit of a mystery, but the thing that's interesting to me is they don't self-destruct. They lead the nation, and one of the best teams you're going to see, least penalized team in college football, also second in the nation in turnover margin, so they're doing the little things. If they have a guy who's the poster boy for the team, it's Todd Reesing. 23 touchdowns, only four interceptions. He has to play well tonight. Now, the Cowboys couldn't hang on in the fourth quarter against Texas do they have enough firepower to upset Kansas well, I think that's the key is the firepower Oklahoma State will have to score with Kansas they have plenty of ability Zach Robinson has taken over as a quarterback in Stillwater and he can run and he can throw plenty of weapons around him Dan Trell Savage has the ability since he's been in the game he's given them great balance in the backfield and on the outside watch number 12 it's senior night he's fired up at Darius Bowman has that ability to keep the defense honest I think we're gonna see a lot of points tonight I'm excited so. I'm an offensive guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up, folks. And if Kansas can stay unbeaten, 10 and 0, it'll touch off some celebration up in Lawrence. Kansas, the Jayhawks remaining unbeaten, one of only two teams. They'll face Oklahoma State tonight, a team that can score an awful lot on Saturday Night Football. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Hawaii, sorry, Rainbow Warrior fans, you're unbeaten, but you're out of the mix, all right? Kansas is the last remaining unbeaten team because number one, Ohio State, got knocked off this afternoon by Illinois at home. Juice Williams had four touchdown passes. That was part of the difference. Yeah, but you can't beat the king on top unless you can run the football. And today, the Illini had 260 yards on the ground. The Buckeye defense really fell apart against the rush today, which allowed Juice Williams and company to win. Most yards given up since 2001. Beanie Wells did have two touchdown runs here. Gets him back to within a touchdown, but then Illinois just ran the clock out, just ran it down, ran it down. After the game, things got a little heated. Ohio State, I'd be worried some of those players 
officials could be looking at that and saying, hmm, you're out for the Michigan game. All right, you got Kansas right now unbeaten with two one-loss teams ahead of them, LSU and Oregon. Is this a chance to impress and jump ahead of those Absolutely. Teams? Hey, just win. Impress. All you got to do is win a football game. Kansas has a chance if they can just run the table that they will play in the national championship game. As simple as that. Now where the really discussions come in will be the once beaten teams. Oregon, in my mind right now, is number one. Number one in the country. They're at the top of the ballot right now for all the once beaten teams. But it's going to be a great month of conversations of the once beaten teams who played for the title. I agree with you on Oregon. Oregon. They were this far from being undefeated, and they are the best one-loss team. On the flip side of that, Kansas can run. If they were to run the table, they'd have wins against Missouri and then a championship game probably against, or against Oklahoma. They had the win at Colorado. They have the wins to leapfrog and move forward. Yep. We can't forget LSU, though, right now is number two in the BCS. Hey, it's senior day. Dontrell Savage is hoping Oklahoma State makes it a good one against Kansas. Design. Designed to perform. Pontiac. Designed for action. This telecast available on ABC HD presented by DLP HTDV. Well, just like Doug Flutie told you folks, the Big 12 is set to move forward. Take a look at the North and South. There is Kansas at 9 0. Missouri with a win today over the Aggies 9 1. Tonight, Oklahoma leading Baylor 21 7. They too could move to 9 1. And there's Texas at 9 2. Win out here, and you got a great chance to wind up in New Orleans. We've got some terrific matchups. Let's go down below now to Lisa Salters. Lisa? Well, well Brent, as you and Kirk know, a key matchup tonight is going to be between Kansas corner Akib Talib and Oklahoma State wide receiver Adarius Bowman. Both guys like to run their mouths a lot, but both have been uncharacteristically silent all week long. I got a chance to catch up with Bowman during pregame warm-ups, and I asked him, why so quiet leading up to such a big game? And he said, hey, there is nothing really to say. People will see what's up when I get on the field. Now, as for undefeated Kansas, I spoke to wide receiver Kerry Meyer earlier this week, and he said, for whatever reason, people don't think of Kansas as a football school. They just think basketball. Even after we put up those 76 points, a basketball number, on Nebraska last week. But he said, look, we're nine weeks in. We're yet to, we're yet to have a loss next to our name. Hopefully, we'll start opening people's eyes. Going 10-0, that should help, right, Brent? Absolutely, Lisa. And Mark Mangino is causing folks up Kansas way to talk football. You can see this season how it has been turned around by Mark, who once was the offensive coordinator for Bob Stoops nearby in Norman, calling the plays the night that they won a national championship. On the other sideline, Mike Gundy, who was a terrific quarterback here at Oklahoma State, was one of the most heavily recruited athletes to come out of the state of Oklahoma, selected to come to Stillwater here, was a baseball and football sensation in high school, and was a remarkable quarterback here during the era of Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders were in this backfield. Our weather is terrific tonight. Temperature right now, Kirk, 67 degrees. Wind, just a slight breeze at 10 miles an hour. The stadium is still being renovated, won't be completely finished until 2009. Kansas won the toss and they will receive so we will see the Jayhawks first and it's interesting Kansas leads the nation in kickoff returns with 31 yards of return it's just one of the small things you add all of those small parts together and you can figure out why Kansas is 9 and 0 coming into this game Marcus Herford the 13 is their whiz back there on the returns. Mm -hmm. 
Rollins and Rick starts us on our way. Bobbled. Scooped up by Herford back at the goal line. Well short of the 20 yard line. Not a positive start. So Todd Reese and a week ago against Nebraska when they put up 76 points it was three and out on the first series and then they scored 10 consecutive series. Well Brent he's listed at 5'11". We're trying to give him a break here for Doug Flutie. I think he's really about 5'9". He's accurate, undersized, intelligent. He's the key to the offense. He makes all the decisions and right now he comes in with a lot of confidence on this season. There you can see the players looking over to the sideline. Audibles are called by the coaches on the sideline. Flair on first down to McAnderson. McAnderson coming off a big day, four touchdowns. You know, there are so many great Kansas stars who are just delighted at what's happening. I guess none more so than John Hadle, who had a, just a remarkable career back in the late 50s and early 60s, went on to the National Football League. But think of some of the other guys. Nolan Cromwell, Gail Sayers, Bobby Douglas. They're probably all watching tonight. Very proud. Pulling for their own mother here. Second down and four. Double pass inside shades of the Flutie man Derek Fine picking up the first down and let's go to John Hadle with our Dell offensive lineup. The Kansas offense is second in the nation with 46 points per game. It is led by Heisman Trophy candidate sophomore quarterback Todd Reason who threw six touchdown passes last week versus Nebraska. A new school record. The glue on the offensive line is senior right tackle Cesar Rodriguez. This will be a team best 39th career start for him tonight. The chains were brought out very close and you can see it was inches shy so I can see to the move. First down a little prematurely right there and it's third and one. Kirk. And Mark Mancino realizes he comes in on the road his team is playing with confidence but I think he realizes talking to him on the field before the game his offense needs to start very very well against this Okie State offensive firepower. Quickly they move up with Reezy on first sound and the Cowboys jam that side of the line they were not ambushed defensively. Mark Anderson struggling for it and it is going to be fourth down. So the punting unit just like last week three and out and the Jayhawks under Mangino failed to pick up that first down and a big stop for Oklahoma State in their defense gets the home crowd excited to think that they have a chance here to slow down Todd Reesing. Barry Cox return the Kyle Tucker punt. So let this one bounce at the 45. So Oklahoma State will have pretty good field position for Zach Robinson, a sophomore from Littleton, Colorado. And uh, when we asked the coaches why they replaced Bobby Reed with Zach, they said he has the it factor. Whatever it is, this young man can make plays. Well, he comes in, he gives you some versatility. He can throw the football. Also, tremendous athletic ability. He runs about a 4 5 40, so he has quickness. And as we talked about in the open, a lot of weapons around Zach Robinson that they'll utilize tonight. Zach moves up behind his center, Andrew Lewis, who had to take over this year as a sophomore because of an injury. Here's Savage and Kirk mentioned on first down. He picks up nine yards, and that'll leave them in second and one. James Holt is there. Let's have Zach Robinson introduce the rest of the Cowboy offense. In the backfield, I'm joined by the Big 12 leading rusher, Dantrell Savage. We've got a couple big play threats with the Darius Bowman and Brandon Pettigrew. Those guys are big targets. Up front, we have David Koenig making his 34th career start. We hope to send these seniors out with the victory on senior day. Second down and one. Bobble. Des Bryant couldn't hang on. Let's have John Hiddle introduce the Jayhawk defense. This great defensive line led by James McClinton hasn't given up more than 80 yards rushing in the last five games. The three linebackers lead the team in tackles and are the backbone of this second ranked defense in the nation. Cornerback Aqib Tlaib will be a key factor in shutting down the Cowboys wide receiver Darius Bowman. 
Well, here is third down. Darius Bowman a year ago had a career. 13 catches for 300 yards and four <laughs> touchdowns up in Lawrence. Option look. Zach doesn't get it as Mike Rivera. From Shawnee Mission, Kansas, number 40, the junior makes the big stop. And Mike Rivera, this is exactly how you defend the option. He's been preparing all week long with his coach, Steve Tobar, and also with Bill Young, the defensive coordinator. Quarterback is going to come down and try to make a read. A little cat and mouse game by Rivera. Finally, quarterback decides to keep it and go underneath, and Rivera, cat like quickness to come underneath. Matt fake. And they pick up the first down. Why not? Wait a minute. That spot looked like it was a little bit short, <laughs> huh, Kurt? Well, we may have to uh, bring out the sticks. This is pretty close. Very close. Trying to catch. If the yellow Kansas line is accurate, ground. that oh, yeah. is short. Yeah. Yep. Give Kansas credit. It kind of speaks volumes about the way they played. No Most mistake. teams get caught off guard. Yeah, they're they're locked in there. Let's see. Ooh. The yellow line was not completely accurate, but <laughs> the, the result is good. They, and not only did they go with a fake, snapped it right to the up back, but they, they did it fast. They tried to catch Kansas off ground. And there was absolutely no de denying Kansas and their special teams. And a nice job by Justin Springer, the linebacker, who's in there with some good instincts to make the play. Harris Wright, number 41 from Houston, was in there too, and that brings Todd Reese and the offense back out. So they gain in field position. And that's the running back for Anderson. A very interesting uh, story down with the Oklahoma State defense. One of the Youngsters are going to be watching tonight. He'll be coming in on Nickel. There he is on the sideline right now. That is Martel Van Zandt. And he's a senior from Tyler. And folks, he is deaf. And standing next to him, Ollie Lee is his interpreter. We are going to have him after the snap introduce the defense and sign language as Reason snaps one off. And this will bring up third down. Now let's go to Martel Van Zandt using sign language with an interpreter to introduce the Cowboy D. Our Cowboys defense line is led by, led by Marquis Fountain and Nate Peterson. Our linebacker core, led by senior Donovan Woods, a former quarterback. And our secondary, we got Jacob Lacey coming off three interceptions, one for a touchdown. But don't forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good job. Uh, I might tell. We certainly will not forget about you. That catch, incidentally, by Briscoe for the Jayhawks. Brings up a third down now. In trouble. Steps away from it. Incomplete, waved off by the line judge on the near side. And the Jayhawks are forced to punt again. You can see the emotion of the defensive coordinator, Tim Beckman. He is fired up and excited with the way his defense is flying around right now and trying to put pressure on Reesing. Reesing broke contain, had an opportunity to pick up the first down, but just the receiver that time, Bresco could not hold on. So Tucker Kirk is back on the field, his second punt. Cox. Set back to return. The Jayhawks would love to bottle the Cowboys up inside 20 here. Hangs this one very high. Fair catch. Makes the catch at the 15 yard line. He does just that inside the 20 yard line. So when the fake failed, advantage in field position to the Jayhawks. Back in New York, I'm Matt Weiner, keeping you current on everything happening across the country. In this Taco Bell update, Boston College in bounce back mode after the loss to Florida State at Maryland, but the Terps have struck first. Chris Turner, Jason Good, Maryland on top, 7-0. Tim Tebow has thrown a touchdown and run for a touchdown. Guys, the 11th straight game in which he has thrown one and run at least one. Zach Robinson brings the Cowboys quickly. Neither of these teams use the huddle, but they do check over to the sideline to see if any audibles are going to be called. Savage. Lined up on the toss play. He'll come to the left side. Picks up about three tough yards. What a wild and woolly day 
Just like the entire season, the Ohio State Buckeyes, their 28 game regular season win streak snapped by Illinois. Michigan lost in Madison to Wisconsin, and the Fighting Irish have lost to another service academy, Air Force. Well, I, I, I think the one thing that needs to be said about what Illinois did is that was, that's not Ohio State looking ahead to Michigan. That's Illinois outplaying Ohio State in Ohio Stadium. Congratulations to Ron Zook. Second and eight. Complete on that flanker screen of Darius Bowman. He touches the ball for the uh, for the first time. And so, old wise man, I turn to you. Let's oh. let's say that LSU wins tonight. Yeah. You can sit at home watching. And uh, well, I'm not going to put Kansas in the win combo. How would you vote them? Well, I, I think right now, depending on who you talk to, a lot of people feel Oregon. I mean, they're they're this close to being undefeated when Cameron Colvin fumbled the football when he's diving in to win the game against Cal. But LSU. And, and, and of course, Oregon feel that they now may control their destiny, but a lot will be still said in these final four weeks. Deflected. Caught by the lineman, Steve Denning. Denning on the ricochet with the reception, but it cost them yardage when he didn't bat the ball down. The ball goes up into the air, and you're not used to seeing the big offensive lineman with the quick hands. That's not bad athletic Great ability. He's yeah. on the ground. Looks like, yeah, he looks like a wrestler with those quick feet and quick hands. But he got his hand up there. And fortunate that it was not a, a bigger uh, mistake there for Oklahoma State. So Fodge punts it, and here is Webb. Gives ground about a yard or two. So. It's, it's just like Herbie's been predicting all day. Now you yeah. have a tremendous defensive struggle here. Yeah, right now. absolutely. The way the season's going, anything you expect to happen, the opposite that happens. Is the truth. Uh, but you know, you, you look at LSU and Oregon right away. But I think everybody's now seeing that Kansas and Missouri and Oklahoma are the big yeah. winners today. Absolutely. Because, because now the door just cracked open because you're an Oregon upset or an LSU upset away from these teams now in the Big 12 getting right in there. Whoever wins the Big 12 will be in San Antonio. Yeah. What a championship game they're going to have down there this year. That'll be on December 1st, and there's still a lot of snaps prior to that. Here's Reesing off a fine fake, throws almost intercepted. Incomplete, and that was Donovan Woods, the last of the Woods brothers to play here at Oklahoma State. You might remember his brothers were Sean and Dewan, both wide receivers. And of course, uh, Donovan, he's played three positions here, including quarterback, and his father, Lawrence. Mom Juana are in the stands, of course, watching Donovan Woods, the senior here on senior night. Second down and ten, and Jake Sharp is the running back for the Jayhawks. Reezy up behind Cantrell. Option look. Short of midfield and uh, a week ago Kurt, against Nebraska Todd Reese may have been the quarterback of the week across the country well, when you have this kind of night against anybody let alone a, a program with such tradition as Nebraska even though they're struggling you're going to remember that for the rest of your life but you look at his season 23 touchdowns four interceptions coming into tonight he has a total interception in 139 attempts coming into tonight's ball game. This stadium, when it's finally finished with the remodeling, is going to be noisier than it is now. And we can see that Reesing is having some communication problems with Cantrell. Over the middle, caught for the first down. Terrific pass. And he hit Marcus Henry, the senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. And Henry does the rest. That's a 16-yard gain. And it's a good job here by Kansas, utilizing the speed of their de their offensive playmakers. And then right here, it's going to come right underneath. But it's the way the three receivers, the trips to the right, they clear the defense out. And look how it opens up underneath. That's something that Oklahoma State has to be aware of, are the short, accurate throws from Todd Reeson. Look at this formation. Stacked. Four receivers, two on each side. Reesing comes back, and he comes in underneath to Briscoe. 
So Desmond Briscoe is the talented freshman from Dallas. He caught three of the touchdown passes a week ago against Nebraska. And you can just see how they're breaking guys wide open against this D. And, and I think the reason that Todd Reesing has this success is because he doesn't necessarily have one go to guy. He will spread the football all over the field for Mark Mangino. He's got four receivers on almost every play. They'll stretch you down the field and then they'll throw it underneath quite a bit. Checking over to the sideline. See if there's any late information from upstairs. Complete for a first down. Folks, it's like stealing. He was wide open. Briscoe was standing over there with nobody on him. And one thing Oklahoma State knew coming in, you have to walk your defensive backs up because most of the throws from Kansas, the ball gets out in under two and a half seconds. And to be able to get the ball out in under two and a half seconds, a lot of the throws are going to be underneath. And yet this Oklahoma State defense early in this game getting very, very deep in their coverage, making it easy for Reesing to find open receivers underneath. Reesing telling the wide receiver to get over to the other side. He didn't pick up the signal from the sideline. He's going to move up under center. Now they check back over there. Uh, three fellas over there signaling in. Only one is live. Here comes McAnderson powering straight ahead. Now we're going to watch how this system works. Reesing is told they have taken the out of lane out of his hands. Now here we are. We're going to see the signaling coming in from the sidelines, Kirk. And, and I said to the coach, I said, what about somebody, you know, uh, trying to steal your signals? He said, well, we can change them during the game. We can get somebody else's hot. And it happens so fast. Things change. He has 42 plays. All the skilled players have 42 plays on their wristbands, and the rest of the plays are signaled in. He'll look over, and right now, Ed Warner, the offensive coordinator from upstairs, is communicating to the guys on the side and then making the proper call. It all happens from upstairs with Ed Warner. No reason. He taps that right hip, and he looks that way, covers, come back left high. Grab, signal, touchdown. Marcus Henry with the first touchdown of the evening. Folks, that was impressive. They had receivers open. And very, very good poise from Todd Reese. He sat in the pocket and waited for Henry to adjust. He went to the corner, and look how he puts it high in the air for Henry at 6'4 to go up and make the catch. Great communication. And a nice job again by Todd Reesing is sitting in that pocket waiting for Henry to break free. Scott Webb will kick it. Makes it 7 0. So Reesing and the unbeaten Jayhawks strike first. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company plane. Visit Southwest.com. Cadillac, introducing the all-new 2008 Cadillac CTS. DLP HD TV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. And Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? Folks, remember the name right there, James Anderson, number 23. Might be the best recruit they've ever had down here. 11 for 15 for the field for Oklahoma State. Set a freshman record, 29 points. And, of course, they'll play LSU in the EA Sports Maui Invitational on Monday, November 19th, 4.30 p.m. on ESPN2. Unbeaten Kansas. One of only two unbeaten teams left. The other is Hawaii. You can watch them later tonight on ESPN2 against Fresno. Kicking off with a seven-point lead. Ball is fielded at the eight-yard line by Devereaux. Devereaux comes left side, picks his way to the well, really close to the 30-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown. Well, this sums up Todd Reesing in this Kansas offense right here. Looks to his right, comes off. Little pump fake right there, holds the safety, but it's a good job again between the wide receiver, realizing his quarterback is needing help. Comes back, breaks away from the defender. The ball is thrown away from the defender up high to the 6'4 man can get it. And right now, Ed Warner, who's the offensive line coach at Illinois last year, very excited for that touchdown now to settle his young quarterback down. How about that? Two former Ron Zook assistants trading blows on the offensive side because Larry Fedora is the offensive coordinator at Florida. 
And under pressure that time was Zach Robinson. That catch by Henry from Lawton, Oklahoma, that's his fifth TD this year, Kurt. He is a very, very impressive looking receiver. You add he and Dexton Fields and Desmond Briscoe. They have a nice, nice combination. A bunch of receivers that can do different things. Now, Oklahoma State will attack and they'll attack in a hurry with this offense of their own. So you can see the hand signaling this time from the Oklahoma State sideline. Savage could pick up only about a yard, and it uh, looks like holding is going to be called here. Holding number 54 of the offense. The penalty is 10 yards, and it's still second down. That's the young center, Andrew Lewis, who was uh, forced in, making the signal calls. He replaced a veteran because of an injury. They said he's come along fine, but he's still he's only a sophomore, and uh, there's a true freshman from Mesquite, Texas, Grant Garner, behind him. So a lot of pressure on that young man here, uh, Kirk, tonight. Three sophomores on the offensive line. That's why they rely so heavily on the option and breaking the quarterback to the outside to try to find some one-on-one -on -one matchups with their skill. Little Savage on that draw play. He is finally wrestled down at the 37-yard line. Well, I, I think Dantrell Savage is the key tonight for Oklahoma State. They have one of the more balanced attacks that you will see in the country. The reason Oklahoma State started early this year with some struggles is because number one they didn't settle in on Zach Robinson and also Dantrell Savage didn't come in because of his health concerns until about the fourth game into the year these last six games they have been on fire and it all starts with his ability to be physical and running the football Zach Carter to block he's got a third down and two Zach is offset to the left Zach keeps it for the first down. Heck of a sneak. It was. When they struggled early, the coaches will tell you it was because they were without Dantrell Savage. You can see those first three games, they started the year one and two, lost to Troy, got blown out by Georgia and Athens, and then the last six games, 39 points, and the balance, 279 yards, the ability to run the football, and also throwing for 273. Darius Bowman here tonight has caught only one pass for three yards. Remember, hit 300 yards last year. Hit right at the proper moment. That time, it was Kendrick Harper delivering the blow on the big man, and Bowman could not hang on. What timing this was. I, I, from watching it live, it looked like a great play. Let's see if he gets there a little bit too early. I think the timing's pretty good, man. I'm with you. I think that's pretty good coverage. And this is the biggest difference between Kansas this year for Bill Young as a defensive coordinator and last year, getting much better secondary play and just like that from Harper. Yeah, they were dead last in the country in pass coverage. Savage again. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, he's going to make it the third and uh, makeable. Coming up is Daryl Stuckey, the safety, up to take him down. Well, Harper's been a big part of that, and I just think it's a little bit more familiarity with what they're trying to do. There's more depth now, but as we're starting to see on this drive, when Savage gets going, that's when play action starts to really help out Oklahoma State, and they can get the ball downfield. Robinson back in the shotgun, checks over, see if there's an audible, passes along. And they will shift Savage to the left side. Going deep. Great grab by Des Bryant. Des Bryant went airborne, and it's a 29-yard gain. Well, Darius Bowman is the senior, and Des Bryant is the true freshman, 6'2", 210 pounds. But he shows you he's got the ability to get by a corner, and then the timing. What an athletic catch that time by the freshman, Des Bryant. From Lufkin, Texas, like many of the Cowboy players. They want to wall you to sleep with that running game and then throw it downfield. They tried to blitz Savage. 
steps inside the red zone and he's out of bounds at the 19 yard line and let's go in down below to Lisa. Well Brent you think Todd Reesing is is a small guy Dantrell listed at 5'9". One of his coaches said he's barely 5'8". I, we spoke to him earlier this week and he said that he really was not recruited out of high school because he's undersized. He said he only weighed 170 pounds coming out of high school so he ended up going to Gulf Coast Community College in Mississippi. Now he said people know who he is and his high school coach has been getting calls all year long from the big schools. The big schools saying how did we let this guy slip out the back door. Indeed from Columbus Georgia. The senior he's been bothered by a stomach and a groin muscle injuries this year. Zach is back firing in zone. Incomplete. Brandon Pettigrew, one of the better tight ends in the Big 12, was the target. He caught eight balls a week ago you, against Texas. You and I love Brandon Pettigrew. We, we both said to each other up here before the game, everybody wants to talk about it, Darius Bowman, but it's Brandon Pettigrew who compliments Bowman and Des Bryant, and makes defensive backfields. They cannot focus all their attention on Bowman because if they do, they've got to be very careful. Number 87 going right through the teeth of the defense as they almost had it right there. Here's your third and six. Three down for the Jayhawks. And they blitz off of that package. He goes into the end zone again. This time he hangs on for the touchdown. Des Bryant, the freshman. An 18 yard touchdown. And the fireworks is underway. Now we're starting to see it. Now we're starting to see it. And the timing between Zach Robinson and the freshman Des Bryant, seen twice on this drive, does a nice job of positioning himself and keeping Harper away from the football. And they're just letting the ball fall right down to him. Positions himself, keeps Harper away from it. And the timing to push himself away from Harper at the last second. Nice job and a perfect placement that time by Zach Robinson. Tough to defend for Harper. So the extra point is added. They tell you good ride, cowboy. Good ride. Today's AT&T All-America flashback, Reggie Bush. In 2004, the Trojan became one of the most electrifying players in NCAA history. Bush accumulated almost 3,000 total yards and 19 touchdowns in his final season. His dazzling play earned him the Heisman Trophy. Goodbye. Touchdown. Text vote to 87654 now on your AT&T wireless phone to play All-America Trivia for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Oh, game day. Yeah, like your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Bergwood, your new car is rolling. It's not stolen. I just bought it. It's going to hit that truck. There's no need to swear. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hot car, huh? It's on fire. Do you have new car replacement? Hmm? Call Allstate to sign up today. Are you in good hands? The biggest lineup ever. The American Music Awards, November 18th on ABC. Well, near the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each University General Scholarship Fund. Well, a week ago, Oklahoma State misfired on a field goal late in the game, missing a 32-yarder. So tonight, Dan Bailey has taken over the kicking. And ball is on the tee with Herford and McAnderson back deep now for the Jayhawks. We are tied here at seven with 3.29 to go in the opening quarter. In the end zone, come out of the 20. And the uh, Cowboys are shorthanded here as linebacker Chris Collins has been suspended for the season. And to get more on that story, let's go to Lisa. Well, Brent, as you said, Chris Collins suspended for the rest of the season. After on Tuesday, he pleaded guilty to charges that he sexually assaulted a 12-year-old girl back in his hometown of Texarkana, Te Texarkana, Texas, in 2004. Now, Collins was 17 years old at the time, a junior in high school. He had been offered a scholarship to go to the University of Texas, but I spoke to officials at Texas, and they told me this week that once he was arrested and charged, they rescinded their scholarship. Collins sat out his senior year in high school in 05, but was offered a scholarship here at Oklahoma State.
State in 06. He played last season and this season up until this week when he pleaded guilty to those charges. Now, a jury has recommended a five-year sentence to be served through probation, but ultimately a judge will hand down punishment, and that is scheduled for December 10th. Right. All right, Lisa, thank you. And uh, McAnderson, the ball carrier, I had an opportunity to ask Coach Gundy a couple of questions about the situation with Chris Collins. We're going to get to that here in a moment. Second down and 10. You know that Lisa referred to the Texas situation that they withdrew the scholarship when the charges were filed back in 2004. Here's Reese. Forced going far sideline incomplete. And so I asked Mike Gundy how much did Oklahoma State know about the situation. Well, there's some some things we were aware of, but some things we weren't. There's there's sealed documents for lack of information that we didn't get, but uh, we had a lot of information, and we were willing to take a second chance on a young man. And since he's been here, he's been tremendous. And uh, and I would support him in, in a lot of different areas, but we have to gather all the facts and information and try to make the best decision, as I said earlier, for everybody involved. For the time being, his scholarship has not been yanked, but again suspended for the season. And as Lisa reported, he'll be sentenced on later this year. Now, firing and a great grab out of bounds, though. So Fields, working on the near sideline, made the grab, but he was out of bounds. And with Collins now removed from this defense, Tim Beckman, the defensive coordinator, down to about 12 or 13 bodies that he has confidence in to be able to go out there and, and run his scheme, but this time they force a three and out. So here is fourth down. Kyle Tucker standing back on the Jayhawks' six yard line. We are tied at seven. In case you're just coming home and you didn't get the news, Ohio State lost today. Kansas is one of only two unbeatens left. The Jayhawks and Hawaii. Hawaii later tonight will play Fresno State and that game is on ESPN too. let us go to Matt Weiner in New York Matt. All right Brent let us get to a Verizon wireless update from a very wet Berkeley California playing in the rain the Trojans and Cal John David Booty rolling out finding his fullback Stanley Havili Trojans on the board tied up at seven LSU the presumptive number one of the BCS leading Louisiana Tech out of conference tonight it's 10 0 there. Matt here was just a 21 yard punt Kirk and that gives Oklahoma State great striking position against the unbeaten Jayhawks and they just had the Kansas defense on their heels Zach Robinson starting to heat up a bit. And there's a short drop and they throw that flank there's a fumble Bible. that's a lateral right the Jayhawks cover it up that was a backward pass or a lateral Jayhawks get it games first turnover. They're setting up a throw back to the other side. And Mortensen, the fine linebacker, Kirk, recovered it here for the uh, Jayhawks. Clearly a lateral because they wanted to try to bring a lot of attention over to the receiver who's going to look. Newton wanted to throw it down the field, and he had the entire Kansas defense coming over, but he hurried it. Now that's what you have said. This is a team that doesn't make big mistakes. They read that lateral right away. Absolutely. Alertly fell on the ball, you know. They're plus 16 in turnover margin coming into, the, into this football game. And that's that has a lot to do with why they're here. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So here we go now from midfield. Todd Reasing back on the field. Jake Sharp will take a turn at running back. There's the option play, and uh, Meyer, the starting quarterback before, throws beautifully off of it. And it's complete to Marcus Henry, who is ridden out of bounds. So Kerry Meyer, who lost the starting quarterback job to Todd Reasing and is now one of their fine wide receivers coming around throws the completion. Well here's the man who's going to get downfield. He gives it a little shake to get behind but here's Meyer the quarterback who's going to come in motion and when he comes around and takes the pitch look how the entire defense comes up to open it up on the back side for Henry and Brent you touched on it. Kerry Meyer as a sophomore was the quarterback for this team. Nice throw and a big change of events here for Kansas. He's a fine athlete. He is still the backup quarterback on this unbeaten football team. For those of you not familiar with the unbeaten Jayhawks, here's McAnderson. Powering straight ahead for a couple of yards. That play went for 44 yards for Reezy. 
Oh, I should say for Meyer, I, uh, I was looking at Reasoning stats here. He's thrown for 55, and now Meyer is thrown for 44. And if you haven't seen Kansas play a lot tonight, and you see that little four to the left of their name, and you're thinking, Kansas at four, nine and oh. 21 yard punt to give Oklahoma State the football in their own territory. The very next play, they recover a fumble, and the very next play, now they're inside the 10 yard line trying to take the lead. That's how quickly Kansas can take advantage of opportunities. Reasing. Receivers were covered that time, and he has sacked for the first time Maurice Cummings, the senior lineman from Rosebud, Texas. This is the only way you can stop Todd Reesing is to be able to have coverage downfield. He wants to get rid of the football within two and a half seconds. The coverage was there, but that is just flat out. Cummings beating his man, Adrian Mays, up front. He went right around him and got right into the face of the quarterback. Brings up a third and goal. The Jayhawks spread the field. Five receivers for Reezy. Incomplete. And it's a field goal situation for the Jayhawks. We're tied at seven. Scott Webb, their senior kicker, is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, nearby. That is a big stop for this Oklahoma State defense. Kansas with a big play. And for them to be able to stop them inside the 10 yard line like, like that and force the field goal is very big for their confidence. And the punter Kyle Tucker, the senior, he's the holder. As he looks from behind Webb at this 30 yarder. And Kansas leads it again. Second time tonight. They were up 7 0. Oklahoma State tied it. And now the unbeaten Jayhawks have gone out to a three point lead. We'll be right back. time for today's timeline presented by Sports Authority. We have told you the unbeaten Kansas Jayhawks. Last night in O-Star, folks, 1908. Number four, as Kirk just pointed out, the BCS standings. Average margin of victory, 32.8. Never finished better than fourth in the Big 12, Noah. And here they are, leading 10-7. Got a big one coming up on the 24th in Kansas City against rival Missouri. Here is Cox coming out from the end zone. Out to the 19 yard line. Well, when you look ahead to the Big 12, they've got three teams in the top six. So, Kirk, if you do the math, whoever survives is really going to have a run at that championship game. You know, and I think everybody right now is excited about Kansas, of course. People watching this game who are Kansas mm -hmm. fans are excited. But I think objectively, Oklahoma is an, a team that all of a sudden got a huge present from Illinois and Ron Zook because I think most people feel Oklahoma is that still the team to beat in the Big 12 as far as the Big 12 championship game. But you're right, all three of the teams, Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, now have new life as far as trying to get into the top two. There's the handoff from Robinson and uh, the JX stuff around. Right I want to go back to Missouri uh, just a minute because it, it kind of kind of interesting and it came from you. Yeah. We were off one week not doing a game and I was off at NASCAR and you saw Missouri Oklahoma game one by Oklahoma. But you said to me if they hadn't turned the ball over Brent Missouri might be able to beat them in a rematch. Well I think Chase Daniel needs to start to surface in the Heisman discussion more and more. Their offense if they get to that game can give Oklahoma's defense fits which they did in Norman. So the first quarter comes to an end. 17 points when the Jayhawks have the upper hand by three and ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, a reminder that the Monday Night Football on ESPN continues. Frank Gore and the San Francisco 49ers. Face Seattle, led by Sean Alexander. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. And I guess if Frank Gore can't do much, 
Watch for the former Penn State quarterback Michael Robinson. He might get a shot and uh, Kirk here's a couple of scores I know you're interested in from down Norman way Oklahoma 35 Baylor 14 and the third and LSU 10 Louisiana Tech 7 in Baton Rouge in the That's second. A, I, I'm going to tell you something we'll see that one might end up 56 to 7 but. The, that's an important game for LSU to try to make a statement even against an inferior opponent because there are a lot of first place votes out there that are either going to go to LSU or Oregon. So if you're LSU you want to try to put on a good show or Oregon will take a lot of those votes away from them. So we start the second quarter with a draw play and nice run by Savage. First down to the 36. Look at it, my man. Wow. Yeah, that, that young man wants to move a pile, doesn't he? Hey, firing up the crowd. Let's take another look at this crowd. Uh, th this is what Dantrell Savage brings to Oklahoma State. This is what Oklahoma State was missing in their first three games when he was injured. It's not just his ability and his shiftiness and how elusive he is, but it's the attitude that he brings. He carries five, six, seven, eight, nine white jerseys, and he's pushing them downfield. Now Robinson on the roll. He's going to take off to the 47-yard line. And our Pacific Life game summary we can see some of the numbers here from the opening quarter and I think both offenses right now are starting to settle in both coordinators when I talked to them said the most important thing is we need a, a three or four possessions to find out how the defenses plan to attack us because they both call the game from upstairs that has a lot to do with getting their quarterbacks and their scheme to be able to make the adjustments and then attack here in the second quarter Zach Robinson Replaced Bobby Reed as the quarterback and uh, Bobby Reed when he came to Stillwater was one of the most ballyhooed recruits of the year. He came out of the Houston area. 6 3 junior with a lot of athletic ability and uh, Lisa I know you had a chance to talk to number 14 prior to the start of the game. What's his mindset. Uh, well he said you know he's really frustrated actually he said it's eating me alive that I'm not playing. He said you know I played for three seasons and then after one game. Uh, I get benched so I'm really kind of frustrated and I asked him you know are you thinking about transferring he said I don't know what I'm going to do but that is an option for me I may transfer Robinson slashes for the first down showing you one of the dimensions that he has brought to this cowboy attack makes it to the 37 yard line where it will be first and 10 that's a 13 yard gain curve. and this is a nice job this time by the quarterback Robinson taking it to the outside and then attacking right here he finds a seam that he wants to be able to get up and into and that's what he brings to this offense that Bobby Reed quite honestly couldn't bring Bobby Reed had a strong arm but the athletic ability from Zach Robinson gives this offense a completely different spark. And that change of course did bring about uh, one of the YouTube moments of the year <laughs> which we have all seen over and over is Zach Robinson incomplete at the 20 yard line Pettigrew the well defended that time and the crowd thought uh, that the defensive back Stuckey might have been guilty of interference but of course you, uh, you all remember Mike Gundy with that news conference defense of a column that was quite critical of Bobby Reed had some anonymous quotes in there and uh, coach came to his defense and did he ever I guess uh, we would nominate him for the YouTube man of the year. <laughs> there are a lot of them out there but I, he's 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 definitely a finalist. Yeah I, I would say wait, you know some of you didn't see it. Well, well, let me give you a little taste of it here. You knew that was coming right folks. Second down and ten now. Zach wants to set a screen on the bobble does with Tostin the freshman running back. And he's inside the 20. Well, they set this up perfectly, and Tostin, the freshman, has the ability to run away from defenders. I honestly thought Mortensen 8 might catch him from, from behind, but he was able to pull away from him and then get downfield. And again, well timed up that time by this Oklahoma State offense and a nice call. Now, Kendall Hunter, the freshman. It's his first carry of the night and uh, so let's check in on the uh, Mike Gundy news conference defending Bobby Reed attacking an amateur athlete for doing everything right. And then you want to write articles about guys that don't do things right and downgrade them the ones that do make plays. Are you kidding me. Where are we at in society today. 
Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not a, I'm not a kid. Write something about me. At That's the point, line. Right? At this point, I really kind of laugh a little bit. It, it, you know, it's it taken on somewhat of a humorous overtone. He got so wrapped up in it. And uh, taking off is Robinson. Trying to reach out for the first time. I asked the coaches, I said, tell me about Bobby Reed's reaction to it. I'm, I'm just kind of curious about that. And he said, you know, he was embarrassed about it, but I'm sure that he liked the fact that our head coach got his back. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're talking about a guy who's a four year starting quarterback absolutely. at Oklahoma State. He bleeds orange and black. And what he said came from the heart. You can be critical, you can laugh, make fun of him, but it came from the heart. And if you're a player underneath him, you want to run through a wall for him. I guarantee you the emotion and the energy inside that locker room changed after that with him and the way he came out and defended one of his guys. You know, so it's interesting. I had a chance to ask Mike about uh, being the YouTube man of the year, and here's what he said. We don't even go on YouTube. I've never been on YouTube. And uh, my wife has three sons that she deals with every day. Obviously, our sons, uh, 11, 5, and 3. And so she doesn't have time to go on YouTube either. Uh, and the two little ones don't really know what's going on. And the oldest one just uh, told her that that's the way Dad looks when he's mad at us at home. <laughs> Woo! 11 year old, he can relate to that. <laughs> he can, man. <laughs> when Pops puts his foot down, man, that's law and order in our household. Well, here's a first down and goal. Uh, they came in and measured it now. And Oklahoma State trying to gain the lead here. Savage battles. This time, unable to move any kind of a pile. Picked up about a yard, so it will be second down at goal, Kirk. Yeah, he, he got a lot of attention because of that. But I again, I, I think uh, whether he, he looks back at that after the season and can calm down and think about it, he, he probably would tell you objectively, you know, I let the emotions get the best of me. Oh, sure. But, but the, bottom, the bottom line is he's in the middle of the football season trying to change the season around, and they have played pretty well since that point. Zach's rolling to the right and going to throw off of it. Short of the end zone. Ball bobbled out of bounds on the play. And that was fullback John Johnson who was the receiver. Well, Johnson was open because Pettigrew, our tight end, took two defenders to the corner of the end zone. The ball that time thrown behind him and it slowed him down. If Robinson would have been able to put the ball in front of Johnson, he would have been able to turn the corner and probably walk into the end zone. Third down and goal from the one yard line. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Valley for the end zone. Touchdown, Boston. Oklahoma State leads unbeaten Kansas for the first time tonight with 10 17 to go in the first half. Now Dan Bailey who took over the kicking. Cole Reynolds puts it down. And it's 14 10, a four point lead as Julius Crossland, a senior running back from Amarillo, Texas, puts the Cowboys ahead. You're watching ESPN on ABC. And Leeson recovers a fumble in the end zone. That's his first career touchdown. Wait, is that a Dr. Pepper? Oh, he's going to make the most of this one. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so he's glad you could attend. It. Come Can inside, you believe this? We might be here all night. Is he really going to do this? Look out. Only Dr. Pepper has 23 flavors packed into one bold taste. For those who make the most of everything. Crossland gets into the end zone and 
One of the things that I think all defensive backs always worry about when they get into the goal line is having to come up and make a play. Here's a keep to leave. Number three, the cover corner, lowers his head, doesn't wrap up. It's good contact, but because he didn't wrap Crosland up, Crosland went right over top of him into the end zone. That's why he's a cover man on the outside playing corner. Well, a few minutes after 8 o'clock here in the Central Time Zone, earlier this afternoon, Ohio State fell from the ranks of the unbeaten. Right now, Kansas trails 14 10. And still to move center stage tonight will be Hawaii against Fresno State on ESPN2. So, Mark Mangino's team will see what they can do with 10 17 left. The Cowboys are playing a very solid game here so far. Would you agree, Kurt? There's no question. This game right now has a pacing to the liking of Oklahoma State. Drill back. In the end zone. I want to take you back to the Illinois Ohio State game. The quarterback, Juice Williams, played a sensational game, and it's the Illini's first victory over a number one ranked team since 1956. Juice with four touchdown passes, Kirk, and uh, Todd Beckman was intercepted three times. But the interceptions by Beckman, Juice Williams, 12 of 22, is just how efficient he was and great decision making. Give Illinois and Ron Zook all the credit. It was not a case of Ohio State looking ahead or coming out flat. Illinois wanted the game more, and they upset the Buckeyes in Ohio Stadium. Jake Sharp. Sharp picks up nine yards on that carry and you can see the enthusiasm over on that Jayhawk bench. One of the things that you look at just jumps off the page about Mangino's team when, when you're looking through the notes. Penalized only 34 times. It's yet 34 times. Best in the nation folks. No penalties yet here tonight if you just join. In fact we had only one. Think about that. Think about that. Less than four penalties a game. That's unbelievable. Yeah. You just don't see that. Second down and one. And he praises this team over and over. It's a very intelligent football team. I'm sure you have all heard Mark Mangino say that of Kansas way as Sharp battles for the first down and uh, the sideline trying to pick up an extra 15 and uh, they jump on Woods over there. There is the flag and the personal foul and uh, Mark Mangino thanks the official. Well, thank you. He says thank you. Thank you. One of the things that Mark changed with the team and I know some of you folks again I'm repeating this but there's a lot of people watching this team for the first time after a game on Saturday he brings the after team the in play, on unnecessary roughness by number eight of the defense it's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down he brings him in on Sunday instead of giving him Sunday off they look at the film uh, they get some medical attention if they need it uh, they come in they talk about the game and then he gives them Monday off and he said it helps get them focused on academics for the week and it allows him to bring the coaches in on Monday and they start to get focused on the game plan. Then when the players come back in on Tuesday he said that last game is forgotten. We take them one at a time. It's a, it's a very efficient approach. I think there's many many NFL teams that bring players in on Monday and then give them Tuesday off. As I recall Dick Vermeil did that when he went to the Rams and uh, and later with the Chiefs and he's not the only one. I'm sure a lot of them. That first down and 10 here now for Reesing and play fake going down high incomplete and is uh, they're holding I see Hankies all over the place there are a lot of a lot of flags in the backfield holding number 78 of the offense it's a 10 yard penalty and replay first down there's the first penalty of the night see we bragged on I was going to uh, say here Anthony we are bragging Collins. about him Anthony <laughs> Collins comes up with a holding call but one of the things that I found interesting as well preparing and talking with Mark Mangino is that he said you know I got to go back to winter conditioning last year we lost a lot of close games late in the game so he went back and said I'm going to create a competitive environment everything we do there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser and he really thinks that that had a carryover effect into spring football and then into the end of this season and he says that that has as much to do with their fire this year going back to winter conditioning <laughs> you know Kirk as a reason completes one underneath to uh, Mark Anderson the, the running back he gets past the original line of scrimmage record there. I think he said that the winners got steaks in those competitions yeah. the losers got peanut butter and jelly is that that's all you can do. <laughs> that's, now, now, that's, I, I, I guarantee you not eating any peanut butter and jelly folks he's having a steak man. I want to bake potato and give me that salad to start my guy. I'm going to tell you if I could get Rick Majerus Man, Gino, man, if we go out to a deli together, we'd have a great time. I'd, I'd love every minute of it. I love this guy. Second down now, and eight yards. The 
Here's Reezy. Picks up a block, still looking for someone. Really hard to the right, avoids a tackle, shades of Doug Flutie, and then completes the pass to Dexton Fields. How about that? That would make Mr. Flutie proud back there in the studio. Uh, Doug, I'm sure Doug's watching along and, and probably moving. He's one of these guys that moves around when he watches the game. And Tom Reesing's moving all over the pocket. Comes up. I thought he's going to take off, but great job of keeping his focus downfield and throwing the football. A lot of times a quarterback will find the, that room and take off running. This time he kept his poise, looked downfield, and found field. Great point. So many of them uh, do just that. And he looked, that's a 34 yard game, Kirk. And, uh, you're absolutely that's, right. that's that's Todd Reese. I mean, that, that's what he's provided this year for this Kansas team. You're not going to see a lot of stars, but you're going to see a football team that has a quarterback who's making a lot of good decisions, keeping his team believing that they can find a way to win games. There's McAnderson for a uh, yard. And, uh, you know, we mentioned Doug, and uh, actually, uh, Coach Mike Gundy. Said that uh, Reese reminds him of, of Doug and uh, moves around, makes plays, accurate when he throws it, runs the ball enough to be a running threat, and that's what we've just seen. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen that all season long. I think that uh, people have waited. They've wanted to see if he can do it in the bigger games. When they get on the road, they've won three games this year on the road, and he's been the catalyst. We better call Mark Anderson Pony. Give him equal time. <laughs> Give him some love. Give yeah. down on us in the studio. All right, slashes it off. It'll be first down and goal as Desmond Briscoe. That freshman from Dallas. Snared three touchdowns against Nebraska in that 76 point explosion. How about, how about Nebraska? They give up yeah, 70. He's come back with 70 today. Right? They bounce back. This Kansas offense, Brent, we're seeing right now, they will attack you to the outside horizontally, make you defend that, and then they'll come back inside and try to score. Toss play. Powered for the end zone. Touchdown. The line judge had been pushed back as McAnderson reached out and he couldn't throw his arms up in the air. I think you had a very good picture of it at the bottom of your screen. That's why I was a little bit late in signaling touchdown. They're going to run into the boundary. The receiver's picking up some good blocks and what great effort by McAnderson. There he is. See the, see the line yeah. judge down yep. there? He's still had thrown up his arms because he's got he's got a defender coming over there hard. Well, the ball looks like it gets across the play. This would be a perfect angle. How about the leg drive and carrying Lacey? And the extra point is added, and just like that, the unbeaten Jayhawks regain the lead. Great just answer. like we said. Yeah, great. <laughs> now we're seeing a point. Uh, now they're going. You're watching ESPN on ABC. I don't miss work this Christmas. Yeah, how will you pay for things like food, electricity? Ooh, ding dong bills. Good zooks! You need a backup plan. Oh, oh, oh. That's why we have Affleck. So I'll have cash to help pay bills. Ah. Great! But what if you're still not better by Christmas? Hmm. Affleck! Affleck, ask about it at work. Rudolph's better. But now Blitzen's sick. Ah! Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company playing. Visit Southwest.com. Saturn, with five totally new models, it's just something to rethink about. Saturn, Aflac, ask about it at work. And the Home Depot, you can do it. Well, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum located right here in Stillwater and the Oklahoma State Wrestling Team led by Coach John Smith. They've won four consecutive national titles between 2002 and 2006. Great, great wrestling program down here. And uh, there has been at Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and Iowa State and Iowa. And we got a note from uh, Kansas that KU has fallen behind six times this year, Kirk, and responded with a game tying or the go-ahead score in the next possession five of those six times, including right here. They've been ahead most of the season, but the few times that they have fallen behind, they have fought right back. And again, I think that has to do with the magical season that they're having. The other thing is winning three games on the road might sound like eh, three games on the road. In the last five years, they've won four games on the road combined. So I think winning on the road 
places like Boulder, Colorado, going to College Station, that does a lot for your confidence and belief that you can find a way to get back into a game. California has kicked a field goal to go ahead of USC. 10-7 in that game in Berkeley. Once upon a time, we thought that might be one versus two. That tells you how fast things can change here this season. And now it's 14-10 in the second quarter. Chauncey Washington. The Trojans, just like that. A little bit of a breeze, and it'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line for Zach Robinson. Okay, Kurt. Okay. Here it is, Kevin. Okay, here we go. Time for the Aflac trivia question now. Here we go. What do you got? Yeah, yeah, baby. Here's one for you now. Jimmy uh -oh, Johnson, I got a chance your generation. Here. Okay, I got a chance. Head coach at Oklahoma State. Name the four assistants who later became head coaches on that staff. All right? Okay. I got four it. assistants became head coaches. I got Butch Davis. That's one of them. Dave Wanstad. That's two of them. Think about it. Yeah, let me think about yeah, it. Think about that a little bit. Here's Zach Robinson now. It was a terrific coaching staff, okay? I don't have to tell folks down Stillwater, right? It was before Jimmy went to Miami, what? won national titles, and uh, there's our guy, Bowman. Larry there. Coker? Is he on there? No, came a little bit later. Good guess, though. Good one. Uh, that because was he bad, came. Right? No, it was good. But some of these fellows had moved on the staff, <laughs> okay. uh, jungle a little bit. But Houston Nutt. There you Nutt. go. Good one. It's a tough good one. Yeah, you got one, one more, more now. You got one more to get. Big name or tough one? Well, I, no, you know, I think it's an obvious one, but it's one you probably could look beyond. Okay, let me just tell you that. I think it's second out. You'll say, oh yeah, of course. Uh, here's Bowman again on that quick flanker screen. And uh, in fact, let, let me show you the picture of that coaching staff, and you're going to say, right, oh, of course. Why didn't okay. I, okay. Why didn't I get this one? Now, here they are. There's Jimmy right there. There they are. Houston Nutt, you got Dave Wanstead. I got all the tough ones that I didn't get. Oh, Pat the next Jones. coach, Pat Jones. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That's well, a terrific coaching staff now, 1983, down here in Stillwater. And wouldn't Jimmy like to have had Boone Pickens money behind him with them jets and everything, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you what, he'd have been stalking national titles down here in that era. Oh, the heck of a coaching staff. There's a toss to Savage. Savage on a cut. He's short of midfield. We're going to have a chance to chat with Boone Pickens, who, folks, made the largest donation in the history of a university. He started off with $70 million to his alma mater, Oklahoma State, and came back with $165 million, okay? He's down here watching the game and, and, and some of the projects that they have used that money for of course the geology building and renowned oil man in case you don't know how Boone Pickens made his fortune what a great tackle there is your Akib Talib Kirk there he's coming up making a hit well hopefully Darius Pullman he's going to get up that's the matchup that Lisa Salters talked about in the open so first chance to see Talib make a play and he read this perfectly again we'll see if Bowman's going to be okay Brenny read this perfectly comes up gets around the block and knocks Bowman down wonderful article about Tlaib in Kansas in this week the current issue of Sports Illustrated they featured Tlaib I saw that. Did you see that? Yeah, likes to chatter all the time yeah, he likes prime time he's probably talking down there oh, of course <laughs> yeah well, he's come over there now after making that play he'll watch this one and Sacked. Zach Robinson is sacked at the 35 yard line by the Jayhawks. Jamal Green, number 99, was one of those in there and was the uh, protective pocket broke down on the uh, OSU quarter. Well, Robinson's had some success throwing the football tonight, especially to Des Bryant, but it's been against the other corner. And the punt on fourth down is going to be fielded back at the eight yard line. And Webb is thrown down at the six yard line. A fine punt and even better coverage. Devereaux, Anderson downfield with that punt coverage, and Bowman was shaken up on that tackle. No doubt about it. We'll be right back. I'm Matt Weiner in New York. This Sports Center Minute is powered by Vizio. Juice Williams tossed four touchdown passes against the number one defense in the country. Illinois held the ball the final eight minutes to beat Ohio State, knocked the Buckeyes from the top spot in the polls and the BCS. The team poised to take over is LSU, and they lead Louisiana Tech 20 to 7. Matt Flynn with a touchdown pass, the most recent damage. 
here, Matt, another team hoping to move up came in ranked number four. Unbeaten Kansas leading 17 14 with the ball in precarious field position. Todd Reesing at the end off handoff, and McAnderson explodes to the 35 yard line. So Brandon McAnderson, the senior from Lawrence, Kansas, who put four on the Cornhuskers, four touchdowns last week with a 29 yard gain. And this hole opened up thanks to the right tackle. Cesar Rodriguez got in there and opened it up and you can see the acceleration and that's the thing that will surprise you from McAnderson. He's known as a power back but he's got great feet and vision and that time burst through that hole. Watch reasoning but we are staying on top of the Adarius Bowman story. I'm sure you saw the uh, young man wince with pain the wide receiver and that was Derek Fine the uh, tight end being driven out of bounds on that far side. We we are told that it is the right knee that they are looking at down there as he took this hit right here. Well, Keep to leave came up and made the hit. Lowered his head and he's lucky he didn't hurt himself. But when Bowman came off, you, we've been seeing during the break, he's in excruciating pain. We'll see if he's going to be able to cut back. back. And again, he had a career against these fellows last year. Reezing. Slips to the safety valve. And picks up his running back. And uh, what do you uh, what do you hear about uh, Bowman, Lisa? Well, Brent, he was in a lot of pain, uh, and he just sat on the bench for a long time before the trainers were able to really work on him. He just said, "I don't want to move anything right now." They were trying to, to you know, to see how bad it is, and he just kept saying, "Stop! I, I I don't want you to touch me right now." Finally, they got him to move around a little bit. He's walking up and down the sideline. Uh, it appears that he's okay, but uh, we'll have to wait for a little bit more information. He's a big part of their offense if you eliminate him. Third down, and Reesing checks over to the sideline. He transferred here from North Carolina. He played for the Tar Heels for two years. Snapped off, complete for the first down. Marcus Henry with another reception, the senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Let's see uh, the ISO. Here. Well, there's an isolation here. Trips to the right took all the defensive backs and put one on one this time between Henry and Lacey. And one on one, they will take, Kansas will take that matchup every time. Henry at 6 4 gets to the inside and another nice throw that time by Todd Reese. Now, Reese has thrown for 129 yards and a touchdown. He's 13 of 18. Meyer on the end around. Completed his only attempt for 44 yards. Coming back with the running back and did not surprise the Cowboys. And we sent it to uh, New York and Matt Weiner. Fred, you and Kirk talked about Todd Beckman's three interceptions today. This one, our nominee for the Pontiac game changing performance with the Buckeyes down just seven. Beckman bought himself some time, but his pass was tipped and collected by Antonio Steele. Of course, Illinois went on to win the game 28-21. Check out this season's best Pontiac game-changing performances at ESPN.com. Search Pontiac. So I'm going to talk about what that means as far as the Big Ten is concerned right here after this play. Reesing. Diving catch at the 30-yard line. That was Kerry Meyer, the young man we talked about. He's a backup quarterback. What, what we're seeing Kansas do right now is attack this Oklahoma State defense. Look, they have three on three because of the three receivers. They're forcing this Oklahoma State defense to match up three on three. Well, Meyer's going to come underneath this and have an opportunity to make the play. Great throw and a great read by Reesing, and they're picking on this Oklahoma State secondary right now. You see the players glance over to the sideline, pick up the signal. Complete. And that's about an eight yard gain by Briscoe. Well, let me go back to the Big Ten. Now, it certainly probably means that Ohio State will not make the championship game, but they do have the showdown in Ann Arbor next week with Michigan. The winner of that game wins the Big Ten and at the very least will head to the Rose Bowl. It was the only way that the Rose Bowl could get Ohio State. They would have to lose today to Illinois, which they did. But they now have to go to Ann Arbor, and the Wolverines were beaten today by Wisconsin. But Michigan can get to the Rose Bowl with a win, incomplete on the far side. So an incredible turnaround in the Big Ten. Here's Michigan with three losses this year, and 
the one at the hands of Wisconsin is their only conference loss. Yeah, and the and the way they started the season, losing to Appalachian State and then losing to Oregon in blowout fashion, they had won eight in a row and it looked like they had recovered despite their injuries. And then today on the road, Henny was unable to go, Hart unable to go, and Wisconsin took advantage of that. So I'm sure that Ohio State, the players and the coaches have a very dejected tonight. But Jim Trussell will get them back up by saying we plan for the Rose Bowl next week in Ann Arbor as he snaps it off incomplete and that brings up a fourth down for the Jayhawks. It's kind of old school Ohio State in Michigan. Yeah. It's always used to be for the Rose Bowl. The winner would go to the Rose Bowl. Still to Still be like, determined of course whether or not the Pac-10 sends a team in there yeah. because Oregon right very now. much in the mix to wind up in New Orleans no where the BCS championship game will be played. Here comes your 42 yard field goal Scott Webb. He's hit one already today. Now make it two. Girl that went in for the left hash Denisha number 39 has put them up by three more. They lead it by six. We got a timeout. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 11 Charles Woodson. The only primarily defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. Woodson also had some magical moments offensively. He led Michigan to the 1997 national title and recorded either a touchdown or an interception in all but one game that season. IBM getting it done. So Charles Woodson, a Heisman Trophy winner and a defensive player. He makes the list at number 11. We count down. We will announce the winner on the Rose Bowl and uh, the Wolverines have Beaten up too. Chad Henney was forced out of today's game in Madison with a shoulder injury. Mike Hart could not play because of that ankle injury. And I'm sure that uh, they will both be game time decisions for the Wolverines. Oh, of course. Some big time names there on that on that list. Darius Bowman walking off. Probably examine him at halftime to see if he's going to be able to go. But a frustrating night for a senior who wants to go out the right way tonight for his Cowboy football team. We'll play on Sunday, but again, used to the camera, yeah. Joe, man. Yep. So the Jayhawks with a six point lead, the unbeaten Kansas Jayhawks. Here we are in November. We offered a remarkable football story. Tossed in the freshman, picks it up. And he is out to the 31 yard line. And uh, well, we're coming down the stretch now. Two more races left in the battle for the Nextel Cup. NASCAR roars onto the screen tomorrow from Phoenix. Jimmy Johnson a week ago soared into the lead over Jeff Gordon. Teammates, good friends. I understand they went down to Mexico for a little R&R &R and they come back. But when they drop the flag, folks, they forget all that buddy stuff. And Jeff Gordon would dearly love to climb back in it. Jimmy Johnson has won a remarkable three consecutive races in the chase series. So it's Phoenix tomorrow. Next week, we'll shut it down in Homestead, south of Miami. Here is Savage for the Cowboys, and he's ridden down short of that first down marker. With this kind of firepower, even with the Darius Bowman down, Brent, I still think that Oklahoma State has the ability to get down and not only get in field goal range, they're probably thinking, let's try to get a touchdown and try to take the lead here before halftime. Three timeouts, plenty of time for Zach Robinson. Using a slot formation and without a Darius Bowman now at the end of the half. And Robinson keeps it and he's forced out of bounds on the on the far side by Mike Rivera, junior linebacker. Young man from Shawnee Mission, Kansas, has been very, very active. Number 40 for the Jayhawk defense here today. Rivera led him in tackles a year ago. They moved him from the middle to the outside, and because of his athletic ability, he is all over the field. In fact, all three of the linebackers for Kansas are very active, not only tonight, but this whole year. It's a big part of the package that Bill Young has put together for this defense. The Jayhawks have not turned it over. They've committed only one penalty. Is in trouble, and that's going to bring up fourth down. And that was James McClinton, the undersized but very active. And the Oklahoma State coaches have identified number 93 as the best defensive lineman on this Jayhawk, Jayhawk team. That's their 
their opinion when they broke down the tapes and of course they faced him last year. But they're just kind of waiting here letting a little clock go off before they make the decision probably call a timeout as the clock gets down. The play clock of course gets down trying to give the Jayhawks uh, as little time as possible here with the, the fourth down and and a yard to go you would not think in a six point game given this field position that they would even be thinking about when you see Robinson uh, unbuckle the helmet. So a reminder that coming up on the Capital One halftime report John Saunders Craig James and Doug Flutie will have highlights from the nine BCS top ten teams in action plus all the upsets and surprises uh, around the country here today. I know you arrived in time. Uh, and you saw most of the uh, of the Buckeye game on the second half. Speaking of fourth down and short, uh, you know when Coach Zook decided yeah, finally was, after the timeout used by Ohio State to go for it, that was a big play well, in that last about, eight about six and a half minutes to yeah. go in the game, and in Illinois in their own territory, fourth and in inches, and because they had to make a quick decision, it looked like they wanted to punt. Ohio State had some confusion, had to use a timeout. Right. And when, they, when they came back, they just they took that time to their advantage, decided to go with the quarterback sneak with Juice Williams, picked it up. Destroyed another five or six minutes off the clock and ended up winning the game. You know, uh, Illinois will go to a nice bowl game, and oh. uh, here they are. They're uh, they're, they're lined going? up on uh, on fourth down here. They got to get this one with 52 seconds. Probably trying to draw them offside. Time out. Uh, there they are. Try a little and, freeze uh, this, call. This, this team's not going to jump on. No, you. this is the if last team the stats, that that's going to work. They, on. It's not going to work <laughs> on a Mangino team this year. You know, uh, but 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 the point I want to make about Zook and Illinois, beware of them next year. Completely agree. I mean, what they did today Absolutely. for people that are close to the Big Ten Conference isn't shocking because of the athletic ability. Juice Williams now in his second year, but I think they're going to be able to beat Northwestern. And I think they're going to finish nine and three. That. And I think they're going to go to a January 1st bowl game. And this program is just warming up with Ron Zook. One more year of recruiting. I think they are a team from now on. You're going to see with Ron Zook there in the top three or four every single year in the Big Ten. They're for real. Now down here in the Big 12, of course, this conference is the one that is on a roll right now. Yep. And, uh, here's the punt. Kansas is going to let this one roll dead. But can they stop it inside or go in the end zone? Come out on the 20 with 43 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma 45, Baylor 21. So Baylor's put uh, 21 up, and, and we can see Kirk the All-State uh, standings review. The Buckeyes, of course, are going to topple, and you would think that LSU, but they were in a tight battle now, would move up. It's going to be an argument between LSU and uh, Oregon. I know that uh, your coach. Your coach on game day, he likes the Ducks. He thinks they're the yeah, best team. You know, he, he, does. he sure does. There are a lot of people who, who I think feel Oregon is the top team now in the country. And you know, anybody who makes that argument, it's tough to argue against that. The only loss they had okay, okay. was by a half of a yard where they fumbled the ball into the end zone against Cal. Everything else, they they've been flawless up to this point. So uh, Reezing, letting the seconds tick away as he checks the clock. Coach Mangino. Uh, satisfied with a six point lead on the road. You know when you take a look at what uh, this team has done on the road. Uh, it's it's pretty impressive uh, simply because they won 1914 at Colorado and the next week went down to Texas A&M and won 1911. That's quality when you can go on the road back to back weeks in the Big 12. They'd already beaten Kansas State and then they came home for a game. So uh, I know they picked on the early part of their schedule but this is a pretty good looking football team and let's go down below to Lisa coach they're playing you tight the offense is moving but what do you got to do to pull away well we're moving the ball very well we're putting points on the board certainly would have liked to have gotten the end zone with the score on, on the last drive but our offense is uh, moving the ball well our kids are poised and playing very well tell me about your quarterback it looks like Todd Reese was limped out there actually on that uh, that last meal down now what can you tell me about this I haven't seen him limping he looks pretty good to me all right check it out coach he's limping Lee <laughs> <laughs> Our trainer, Lisa Saltis. <laughs> All right, let's send it to New York to join John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie for the Capital One halftime report. Take it away, guys. All right, guys, thanks a lot. The Ohio State Buckeyes came into today knowing beat Illinois, then beat Michigan at Michigan, and guess what? We're going to the national championship game. Well, 
number one on the docket didn't go so well. Juice Williams had four touchdown passes in this afternoon's game. Yeah, I know touchdown passes are sexy, but this was a game about rushing. Illinois 260 yards on the ground. Ohio State was third in the nation, allowing only 65 going in. That opened up all of these passes. That pass to Wilkins there. Beanie Wells running from 17 yards for his second touchdown of the day. And Ohio State runs out of time. Upset, as you can see at midfield, as was their coach, Jim Trestle. You obviously have to allow this thing to, you know, to happen. And it's, you've got to live with, you know, what we didn't accomplish. And you have to think about what we can do better and how we can, you know, fix uh, anything that we didn't do as well as we can and and then you got to get ready to play a good good football team up in their place and be a lot of emotion up there and you know and and uh, so uh, I guess we just got to take a deep breath small picture Michigan still has a chance to win the Big Ten because they lost today as well but if they beat Ohio State they win it big picture suddenly we have nine one loss teams throw Hawaii out in the mix I know they're unbeaten but they're not in there Kansas can they climb above Two big picture stories. Yeah. Huh? yeah, absolutely. Kansas, all Kansas has to do is just run the table. They have their own destiny in their hands. Control it, get after it, and play hard. Very tough game in Stillwater tonight. They're playing. And when you talk about the one loss teams out there, I think Oregon right now sits on top mm -hmm. for me. They're bunched up, but I think it's a great for story for college football. Yeah, I like it too. LSU's lived a blessed life this year. We said that before, that the, the fourth downs, the last seconds and all that. Kansas, if they run the table, mm -hmm. will have the wins the quality wins to get there. Yeah. LSU may have led a blessed life, but right now they're number two in the BCS, and they're rare for a reason. If they keep winning, it's going to be hard to get them out of there as well. Stick around. We still have more to come here on the Capital One Halftime Show. We'll show you all the scores in the highlights, let you know if there were any other upsets today. This is the Capital One Halftime Report. Sean Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. We told you already, number one is down. That meant only two unbeatens. Hawaii, sorry, you're not in the mix for the national championship. Kansas, you are. The last remaining team that's unbeaten of significance. Zach Robinson for Oklahoma State, 19 yards to Des Bryant. Known for his running, which he can do well. He can also throw the football. This is a very uh, physical offensive line ground game at Oklahoma State. Kansas, though, answered the bell. Yeah, Crosland just pounds his way in, 14-10. But then Brandon McAnderson, five yards on this rush. McAnderson gets in the end zone here, but Reesing's been making plays with his legs, buying time, moving around, scrambling. He's the real deal. Reesing has a touchdown pass. Louisiana and attack facing number two LSU Zach champion 37 yards to Brian Jackson oh, they were dancing with him for a while weren't they fellas <laughs> it was the thought so it was the dance didn't last long though Matt Flynn finds Terrence Tolliver and this one you got to give him quarterback credit for the 71 yards one on one he led him across the field we talked about that last week by the way Craig we him we across left? the field for the touchdown a couple of nice touchdown passes before they have to break this thing wide open Flynn again 37 yards to Brandon LaFell and 27 7 is the lead they've just gone to half time Baylor against Oklahoma Oklahoma one loss right number five Blake Szymanski to wide receiver Thomas White. You know what? This is a Baylor offense that can score points. It's a wide open Texas Tech style offense. They just don't have a defense. Plus, you have to deal with all kinds of pressure from Oklahoma. They can return kicks, punts, run the football, throw the football, go the wrong way. Young man, turn around. <laughs> when you fumble a kickoff like this, it throws the coverage off all the time. It gives you the opportunity to do this. DeMarco Murray. Shouldn't throw the coverage off if you're slow, which you would expect Baylor would be much slower than Oklahoma. 45-21 is the lead where it stands right now. Boston College against Maryland. BC coming off that loss at home to Florida State. Chris Turner, 10 yards to Jason Good. Started out 7 of 9, 118 yards and a touchdown pass, which really opened up the ground game because we knew that they'd be physical on the ground running the ball. Maryland would. Plus BC, Doug, they got a couple linebackers out. Both Pruitt and Dunbar are out. They're starting linebackers, which really hurts them against the run. South Carolina against Florida and the old ball coach said this week, you know, we're just not very good. We don't do anything good. Up against his old team, Tim Tebow, 22 yards to Jared Faison, 13 to nothing. Corey Boyd, though, two-yard rush here, gets it back to a one-point game. You know, so you thought it was going to be a ball game here, but then old Tim Tebow puts the cape on, 
Superman takes him around the corner, then he takes him up the middle, and uh, then, then Florida Gators, they're Tebowing them pretty good. Three rushing touchdowns for Tebow today, breaking the record. That's right, now 17. Emmett Smith had the record with 14. USC, by the way, is leading Cal at halftime of that one as well. So the one loss teams right now, Oregon is the team that you think is the best team in the country right and now. I think, I think LSU best. is in position now. They're good, but Oregon, I think, is the best one-loss team. Kansas just went out, and they're in the game, and now we'll find out who's the best of the one-losses. Yeah, I agree with that. With Oregon, they were one yard away from being undefeated. Kansas yeah. has the opportunity to run the table. All right, stick around. This is the Capital One Halftime Report. All right. Today we're going to start with 12 BCS game appearances, add eight Final Fours, 276 academic All-Americans, and 385 NCAA championships. That's an important ingredient. Mix that all together. Oh, that is going to be so good. And we'll put it in the oven for about 12 years. And voila, the Big 12 Conference, celebrating 12 big years. Who wants some of that? Rising from the Plains is a nationally recognized research institution. Our students, faculty, staff, and alumni are represented by the most prestigious icon of the American West, the Cowboy. Celebrating its 100th year as a state, Oklahoma recalls its storied past and focuses on a bright future. Leading the state into the next 100 years, Oklahoma State University. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, the Giants host the Cowboys in a matchup of NFC Powers. Find out why the Cowboys call their running back Marion the Barbarian. And Tom Jackson takes a trip to Green Bay to find out one of the secrets to the Packers' defensive success. It's all on Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern. Behind quarterback Matt Hasselbeck, Seattle is in its familiar spot atop the NFC West. Mike Holmgren's team is only 4-4 four and, four and has work to do. Alex Smith and the 49ers trying to stand in the way at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. And this is the Capital One Halftime Report. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. We told you number one was knocked from the ranks of the unbeaten. There were other top 25 teams who got bounced around a little bit today as well. Our no huddle highlights begin with Michigan facing Wisconsin. Ryan Mallett in at quarterback, 26 yards to Arrington. Chad Henney had to leave the game, busted up a little bit. Ryan Mallett, the freshman, comes in. Camp Randall Stadium, not an easy place to play. No P.J. Hill, no problem. Zach Brown, 27 carries, 108 yards, couple of touchdowns. And Michigan loses for the first time after eight consecutive victories. Auburn facing Georgia. Brandon Cox, 12-yard pass for a touchdown, ties the game here at 17. Yeah, ties the game, makes it a ball game, but it was the running game of Georgia and Matthew Stafford throwing the football to bring him back. No Sean Marino, 24 yards to the front. Our man Benny, he told us about Marino. Go, no Sean. Hey, this dude here, pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> he good, he good. <laughs> With one loss, Ben Monk of Cincinnati, six yards towards Charlie Howard. 13 nothing, and then this is going to look like the same play. Ben Mock, though this time, rifles it through. Basically over under in the back of the end zone. Mock had a great day throwing a football in that spread offense. Alabama and Mississippi State. John Parker Wilson picked off by Anthony Johnson. Returns in 100 yards. I'd say that's a 14-point swing right before halftime. Bama really had control of the game. Mississippi State then just came storming back. Way to go, Coach Kroon. Anthony Dixon, three yards on the touchdown rush here. It was 17-9 at that point. Dixon, 26 carries for 84 yards. There's Sylvester Kroon. There's a place where a lot of coaches go to basically have a headstone put on. That's a great job. Absolutely. If you're for so fortunate for them to give you a headstone. But, you know, nice <laughs> job out there. Absolutely. That play before the half, they had a first and goal situation. Ended up having to throw the ball. Bowl eligible is Mississippi State. This is the Capital One Halftime Report. The Capital One Halftime Report, brought to you by Capital One, always providing you with great value without the hassle for your financial needs. Capital One, what's in your wallet? The chase for the cup may be winding down, but the race is heating up. 
Jimmy Johnson left Texas Motor Speedway with a third consecutive win and the points lead. He'll have to fend off teammate Jeff Gordon and the rest of the contenders when the chase for the next Dell Cup continues at Phoenix. Coverage begins tomorrow at 3 Eastern on ABC. Last week, Nebraska gave up 76. Today, they scored 73. Joe Gans, 510 yards and seven touchdowns, school record. Not bad for a backup quarterback, is it, John? No, you know bad. what? Tom Osborne, it took him a whole season of 10 or 11 games to get the seven touchdown passes. Air Force in Notre Dame. Aesop Schwab fumbles the ball. John Rebolt returns it for a touchdown. Air Force takes it to him. Navy beat him last week. One win on the season. Sean Carney here, 10 yards to Keith Madsen, was 31-10 at that point. Notre Dame's first nine-loss season in history. Your second half is coming up after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Greg Fields, weather. Plan your day smarter before your commute. News 8 Daybreak in high definition. Live from Victory Park, weekday mornings at 5. Got some thunderstorms in the forecast, but how widespread after the game? We welcome you back to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. There are only two unbeaten teams left in the nation as Ohio State lost Illinois and one of them is Kansas leading Oklahoma State at the half 2014 with Kirk Herbstreit. I'm Brett Musburger and uh, so what are we looking for here in the second half. Well, If you're an Oklahoma State fan you need to see your quarterback Zach Robinson start to make some plays through the air because Todd Reesing in Kansas are doing what they have to do tonight on the road. He got started pretty early with some of the underneath routes. I think that got him into rhythm and then of course when he scrambled off to his left and found Henry for a big touchdown. But this is probably the play that illustrates what Todd Reesing can do the best. Scrambles buys time and gets the ball downfield to fields. But if you're Oklahoma State you've got to get Zach Robinson. And, going. and that was our Southwest Airlines playbook. So we we're ready to start the second half. The Jayhawks won the toss. They took the ball to start the game. So Oklahoma State will have the first series of the second half. Parrish Cox and Tommy Devereaux are back deep here. And Scott Webb, the fine Jayhawk kicker with the ball on the tee. Jayhawks favored coming in by a touchdown, and that's exactly what they lead by right now as we get ready here to start the second half on a fine evening in Stillwater Oklahoma for a football game fielded at the 10 yard line looking for an alley over on the left hand side and he will be down at the 31 Tommy Devereaux as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary and uh, how do the numbers look well what I'm seeing right now is Kansas doing what they have to do to be able to win a game on the road they're playing smart playing efficient Oklahoma State cut looking at an offense coming into the night that's close to averaging 500 yards per game now Zach Robinson's coming off a game last week against Texas where he threw for 430 yards they've got to find their passing game and a Darius Bowman his go to man the senior so far not on the field and we don't know if he'll play in the second half. Three down linemen for the Jayhawks to start defensively. Gundy opens with two tight ends and comes back with Savage on a running play, and he is thrown for a loss by Russell Brorson, one of their fine and very intelligent defensive ends. He and John Larson did three point students, and uh, I tell you, that it's something these two defensive ends of the Jayhawks. Brent, you and I were marveling at what Zach Robinson did last week against Texas. You go 30 of 42 for 430 yards, total yards. 486 with three touchdowns and you can see tonight he still has plenty of football left but he's off to a bit of a slow start. He's got to start making some plays through the air. Nine to 14 but only 90 yards and one touchdown are the numbers for Robinson in the first half from the shotgun it holds incomplete and this secondary had something to prove after being torched that middle linebacker Joe Mortensen the junior from Concord California. 
His numbers are impressive, 9 of 14 coming in here, but they're not getting the ball down the field, and it's because of what Kansas is doing. They're trying to put everything in front, try to funnel everything into the linebackers, and when you have three linebackers like Mortensen, Holt, and Rivera, that's probably a smart thing for Bill Young to do with his defense. So we look now at third down and 12 for Zach. Over the middle, complete, but it might be just short. Let's see where they spot the ball. Des Bryant was the receiver on the play. And it, you can see the signal there right there for the official. He's going to be short, and again, nice job by Kansas. Third down, keeping everything in front and forcing Robinson to go underneath to the short receiver and allowing the linebackers like Rivera to play in space. These linebackers play very well in space and make the plays. And that Fodge. Go, guys, let him go. Line drive, punt, Webb back deep, and it'll go out of bounds. Well, I want to remind everybody that New York City is about to experience the biggest wedding of the year, and you're on the guest list. Peter Krause, Donald Sutherland, and Jill Clayberg star in Dirty Sexy Money. On the episode Wednesday at 10, 9 Central on ABC. You start keep here. telling me to Tebow this thing and to keep watching it. I gotta, I'm a couple of uh, series behind. I gotta get on that. <laughs> You know, uh, it's your wheelhouse, right? In, in a few minutes here, speaking of money, is clean money going to come up here and talk to you and me now, partner? I'm going to tell you that right now. And who knows more about oil than anyone I've ever read about. It's Boone Pickens, we're going to have him join us up here. And, uh, just been so generous to his alma mater, incomplete here on, on first down. And so this is Reasons. First series, if you just joined us in the second half, and again, Ohio State losing today. Kansas, one of the two unbeatens left. Hawaii tonight will play Fresno State, and that will be over on ESPN, too. And, and Ohio State losing today not only opens the door for LSU and Oregon, but Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma all now thinking about an opportunity to get up into the top two at the end of the year in the BCS. So here's Reasing snapping it off now in underneath, but short of the first down. The Cowboys keep him shy of the 20-yard line, and that was Kerry Meyer, the young man who threw a 44-yard pass in the first half. He had been the quarterback and lost the job, of course, to Todd Reezy. Kind of an unselfish player. When he ended up losing the job to Todd Reezy, he approached the coaches and said, you know, I, I'd like to help out. I want to contribute. And as a sophomore, for him to be able to have that selfless attitude, again, represents the entire Kansas approach with their players. Yeah, they've been a very unselfish team. Intelligent team, not penalized very much this year. Complete, found a seam. And out to midfield, Marcus Henry in a foot race for the end zone. Can the Cowboys bring him down? Touchdown, Kansas! Cowboy player down on the play. Ed Warner does a nice job here with the way he designs his play. We've seen this before. A little swing is going to draw the attention of the defense, and then you got to split the seam. It's a tight throw by Reesing. The attention by the defense running to the outside of the swing pass, and then the ball is thrown back to the inside. And how about the breakaway speed by Marcus Henry after he makes the catch? So a nice throw, well-designed play, and just tremendous speed by a tall, rangy receiver, 6'4", 210-pound Marcus Henry. Senior nice from Lawton, Oklahoma. Takes it to the house. And a little daylight for the unbeaten Jayhawks right now. And uh, the injured player is still being tended to back here on the sideline. Or I should say back on the 32-yard uh, line. The uh, medical staff is out there. And that is Roderick Johnson, who has been playing some linebacker. He's a uh, senior from the Galveston, Texas area. And it's good to see him uh, being assisted up here on the sideline. And Kirk, you mentioned that we still have not seen a Darius Bowman back. Their yeah. fine, uh, their fine receiver who was injured in the first half. And obviously, you're looking at Des Bryant now, who have to step up from Mike Gundy and 
Jeremy Broadway, some of the other receivers are now going to have to become the go-to receivers. But that was a such a tight window for Todd Reesing to be able to get that throw off. Good to see Johnson here walking off. So Johnson will come on over to the sideline of the uh, Jayhawks. We'll have an extra point to see if they can make it 27 14 early here in the third quarter. But uh, the Jayhawks are very efficient. Not not a spectacular football team, but a team, yeah, right? That's team. exactly what they are. They've got enough athletic ability to play with some people. Believe. Scott Webb now. Packs it on. So when we come back, we're going to talk to the man for whom this stadium is named. This is the Boone Pickens Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. And when it's finished, it's going to be one of the best in the country. We'll be right back with Boone. This game is being broadcast on ABC HD, presented by DLP HD TV. So the unbeaten Kansas Jayhawks with their uh, first 80 yard touchdown pass since 1988 against Nebraska. That was Willie Vaughn who hauled that one in. And they've tacked on seven more here, and it's going to be an uphill battle for the Cowboys. It's 27 to 14. And Webb with the ball on the tee, ready to kick it off. Parrish Cox and Devereaux again back deep for the Cowboys. It'll be fielded at the three yard line by Cox. Out to the 21 yard line. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure really to uh, introduce the most generous donor in the, in the history of the University of the United States. Uh, Boone Pickens and when you come and you see the stadium named after you and what they've done and all the remodeling it has to make you very proud. It does. It does. It uh, very proud. And when will they have it all completed Boone. When will they get done with all this. Uh, Brent I don't know the stadium <laughs> will be uh, will kick off here for the full stadium in September of 08 and uh, the then you the next up is the indoor facility which is across the street north. And the practice fields over there, but I think it's uh, you know it's going to be over 400 million when we get through, and uh, uh, you know I think it's going to take five, maybe even ten years. Well, stick right with us here, Boone, as we uh, see what the Cowboys do. Uh, take me back to your days at uh, geology. Of course, you studied here. Were you an avid football, basketball fan at uh, at Oklahoma State? Well, I, you know, my first year was at Texas A&M, and I went on an athletic scholarship. Believe it or not, I was a basketball player. Yeah. They cut me because they said I couldn't run fast enough to scatter leaves. <laughs> and I came to Oklahoma State and then tried to make it up here and didn't here. Yeah, that great program up here, but that's interesting that you transferred up here and back in the uh, gun to Kirk. And not doing a thing against that defense out there right now. No, I think this Kansas defense right now is pinning its ears back and coming after Zach Robinson James McClinton the most talented defensive lineman has such good quickness boy he goes right through David Cohen to get to Savage and you take Savage away from this offense and the balance away really slows down Zach Robinson but what made you want to but it back to right quick I was married and had a child and I had to get out of school so okay. I didn't spend a lot of time on on sports in college so at that point when you get married, you discover that oil is a pretty good thing to make a living in, right? <laughs> well, we did pretty good. I say, yeah. my friend. There's a screen set up underneath by the Cowboys and not doing much. I, I have to tell you, Boone, that through the years I've read your quotes, and you were one of the first persons that I ever remember saying, it's not going back to $50 a barrel, folks. We're headed to 80, and we might be headed higher. And you put your finger on it many years ago, and you said we got to be in trouble. Now, are we at peak oil? I've got I've got to ask you that about our situation right now. Peak oil? You mean globally? Yeah, globally. We are 85 million barrels a day. Is all the world can do, and they can't add anything to that, I don't think. And see, our demand globally is 88 million barrels a day, so 85 won't cover 88. Right. So it's going to push the price on up. Now you're going to have to kill demand with price. So. Great coverage. The Cowboys back by midfield. That, that's the kind of tackle you like to see there now, Boone, on that coverage. Oh, I like that. I like the coverage. I hope that. 
Let's hope this young man is okay. Yeah, yeah I hope know. he's okay. Yeah. Hopefully Webb gets up. Webb decided to show a little courage here. Ooh. Wow. Well, it's a wonder it didn't come come loose from him there. Getting hit like that. You're and right. Terrence, 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 Anderson, on, Terrence huh? Anderson timed that up perfectly. What, so, what, ahead, what, once you had an opportunity to go out and, and uh, become very successful, what was it that about Oklahoma State that made you want to get involved in, in being so generous and helping with their facilities? Well, the first thing I did over here was for the academic side, which was the geology uh, school. And I've been very active there. I was, I was up here working on that last Saturday. But uh, I, I, very simply, I don't like to lose. I got tired of losing. I like that. And, uh, and so. Interesting. That's good. <laughs> Do you ever said he plays now? Do the coaches? Or? Oh, no. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> football. They, somebody asked me the other day, said, Do you talk to coach? I said, Yeah, I talked to him last week. And I, they said, What did you say? I said, Play harder. So. <laughs> Play the fourth quarter harder, oh, Boone, because right. you guys were doing good for three quarters down against Texas. Uh, Boone, the other commodity that I think I've seen you uh, talk about is water. And as you know, down in Atlanta and uh, certain places around the country, uh, what, what's your feeling about our water supply in the United States? We know that you think that price of oil should go up so that we would uh, learn how to take better care of it. I'm not a water expert in the United States. I'm a water expert in Texas. And uh, we're going to we're going to need all the water we can get uh, in Texas, and it's a little mislocated right now. Some is is uh, uh, pretty far away from the market. And we'll what we'll do eventually, uh, I will. I'll build a 328 mile, 96 inch pipeline from the Panhandle of Texas up in the north part of the state down to the Metroplex, and that'll probably be done within five years. And we'll move about 200,000 acre feet of water a year from there. You know, that's interesting. The state of Georgia approached the state of Montana many years ago and mm -hmm. wondered it, could you build a pipeline from up in the north all the way down to Georgia where they've had the drought? Well, you have to think about the size of the line. You've got to, you've got to get volumes that, uh, that will make economic sense. And for us, we can go 328 miles with 200,000 acre feet of water. I don't know. I can't imagine what size pipeline you'd build from Montana to Georgia. <laughs> I can't <laughs> You're talking about Montana. Well, I wondered, you know. You know, I, I don't want you folks to think I forgot about the football game. I know that there's still a game going on. Boone, I, I just want to thank you for the generosity uh, to colleges in general, the geology and, the, and everything that you've done for Oklahoma State. I want to tell you, I walked through what has been accomplished here in the, in the boxes and the seating. I think this is going to be one of the great facilities in college football when it's when it's Thank you. Ready it, to. We certainly plan for it to be that way. And uh, if you'll give me just a second longer, sure. we we want very much to change our school. We're in transition now, and the school is. Uh, we've always felt like we were kind of number two in the state. Uh, we want to be. Of course, as good as uh, OU, we want to be competitive in the Big 12, and uh, and I, I think we'll get there. And somebody said, "Well, what do you think it's going to cost?" And I said, "Whatever it costs." I said, "We're going to pay it." So. <laughs> those, those are some of the nicest suites I think I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely, they're just gorgeous here. Meanwhile, the Jayhawks unbeaten, looking for more. Here comes Rick Anderson, end zone touchdown. I know you hated to see that, Boone, and uh, we're going to uh, bid you a fond adieu. But Kirk, my favorite line from Boone Pickett. I love making money and I love giving money away. You know, I just think that's just such a nice way to approach your great, great success. Give me 30 seconds on that. Go ahead. Point. Take that. Okay. The, uh, I want to give it, oh, Ace Greenberg, my friend in New York, Bear Stearns, uh, he said this about me before a group he was raising money for. He said, give it like Boone Pickens does. Give it now so you can see what happens. Don't give it after you're gone Absolutely. and never know what happened to the money. I, I thought about you coming into the stadium today, and there's your name on it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it. That's so exactly yeah. right. That's wonderful, Boone. And they're going to go for uh, two points here against the Cowboys, Kirk. Why not? Every, everything else is working right now. Oh, absolutely. This is this is a great story the Jayhawks are offering. This it year. is. It really is. I great. know it's painful for, for a Cowboy fan, but this is really the feel-good story in college football this year. And there's batted down. Well, Lou, Lou Perkins is, is a good friend of mine, and I tell you, he's done a, a marvelous job up at KU. He really has. Thanks, Brent. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate you bet, Kurt. All right. Always a pleasure. Good. Thank you. Boone Pickens, ladies and gentlemen, his school trails, Kansas unbeaten 33-14.
Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company plane. Visit Southwest.com. The new 2008 Focus. Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And Verizon Wireless. Senior day here, and Dantrell Savage and Adarius Bowman being honored. There is the young man from Chattanooga, Tennessee, who unfortunately was injured in the uh, first half, suffered a knee injury for Coach Mike Gundy. Uh, he took a hard wallop from Akib Talib right here. Last year, he had a career against the Jayhawks up in Lawrence. 13 catches, 300 yards, and four touchdowns. And, uh, and as a senior, it's a tough way to go out in your last game, and he is so important to what Oklahoma State wants to do with the great balance that they have. And now that they're down like this, not having him to be able to throw the football to, you're going to have to rely on some of the younger receivers. Kickoff is fielded down on the two yard line by Cox. And Cox to the 24, where he is wrestled down. So let's. Uh, Kirk, what do we make here? Well, you get Mississippi State and Sylvester Croom a huge, huge uh, pat on the back for knocking off Alabama. What a great year and what a job he's done. Air Force beating Notre Dame. I, I just cannot believe what's happening with Notre Dame. To me, there's no excuse for Notre Dame losing back-to-back -back weeks to Navy and then to Air Force. You could forget about lack of talent. You, Notre Dame's not supposed to lose to the Academy's back-to-back -back weeks. I don't care if they're starting 22 true freshmen. There's a blitz, and Zach is sacked. Taken down by Rivera. Well, Bill Young right now is just turning up the heat and coming after Zach Robinson. Cincinnati with a big win over UConn. Ben Mock and the Cincinnati defense. All of a sudden, UConn is an afterthought when they were beating on their chest, looking for a lot of attention. They go to the back of the, back of the bus. And then Texas and Texas Tech. Jamal Charles, another big day in Texas. I still think an attractive BCS at large team if they can finish at 10 and 2. Here's second down and 17. Savage. Battles his way out to the 26-yard line. What a what a strong rascal he is. Well, he's not going to give up, and you'd expect this Oklahoma State team to keep fighting. I know they have fallen apart recent games down the stretch, but now that they're down like this, it'd be interesting to see what kind of character this team has because the team they're going up against will not let up. They're just going to keep playing as if it's a tie game. This is a very important game for the Cowboys they have not lost two games in a row all season and they were beaten last week by Texas so here they find themselves down 33 14 seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter complete and Bryant forced out of bounds on the far side this is this is who's going to have to step up Brent Des Bryant who in the first half had some big catches and in fact had a nice touchdown catch but on third down, Des Bryant has got to be able to become the go-to guy with Bowman down. And we have to see Zach Robinson in the passing game, not just because they're down, but they have to take some of the pressure off of Savage by throwing the football. Kansas, four down. Zach off a play fake. Into the middle. Incomplete. There's a little confusion there from Devereaux and Bryant both running to the middle of the field. And when you lose an experienced receiver like it, like uh, Adarius, Adarius Bowman, sometimes that can happen. You have two players right in the same area. Bryant, the freshman, Devereaux, the senior. Devereaux doesn't have nearly the experience this year as Bryant, but somebody made a mistake, miscommunication that time for Oklahoma State. And ball is dropped. And that's not a lateral. And let us check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Brent. Colt McCoy is our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week after a big, big day against Texas Tech. 319 total yards. He accounted for six touchdowns. To cast your vote, just text the word vote to 87654 on your AT&T wireless telephone. You know, Matt, uh, Mac Brown and the Longhorns 
they're still in that mix for a BCS berth, whether or not yeah. they get to I, the yeah, Big 12 I, championship I think, game or not. I think if they don't, and they're 10 and 2, I think I think Texas gets in as an at-large. Very well could where they're playing right now. Third down and 10. There's that draw play and a sharp tackle. This is a fundamentally sound team as Jamal Green, redshirt freshman from Kansas City, makes the stop for the unbeaten Jayhawks, who folks could move to 10 and 0 here tonight. For the first time story. since 1899. Amazing. I heard you mention that Amazing. last night with Sean McDonough and Chris Spielman. And one of the things that this defense has for Mark Mancino is depth. They just continue to rotate bodies in and they stay fresh for the whole game. There's a penalty on at the line of scrimmage on this punt which goes into the end zone so we will uh, we will let them sort it out. Only one penalty tonight against the Jayhawks and of course they're the least penalized team in college football. They've been sacked only once and they haven't turned it over here tonight. Remember it was fourth and seven, so a five-yard penalty Outside. not going to give him a first the down. Defense, the five-yard penalty. Second penalty. Still fourth down. You have to go for it. Down 33 to 14. Absolutely. Because every, every time I talk about the penalties, up comes you know. I, <laughs> I know. It's say like, it's just, and say, no more. No more. Just don't not talk you. about it. They're not used to having a few penalties. I, th I think he has to go for those. He's going to bring the offense out right now. It's makeable. Fourth and two. Got a quarterback who's mobile, can run some option, can get him out of the corner off a of bootleg, give him that ability to run or throw. Tostin, the freshman, checks out running back. We're going to throw for it. Got the first down. Put it back in Bryant's hands. That's the matchup, Brent, that they liked earlier. The freshman, Des Bryant, against Kendrick Harper. Harper giving Bryant a bit of a cushion. Robinson got rid of the football quickly to give Bryant a chance to not only secure the ball, but protect himself before Harper came in there. And Oklahoma State, after the penalty by Kansas, a, a rare mistake, picks up that first down. See if they can capitalize on that error now, having picked up the first down. See if they can finish off this 37-yard drive. Savage breaks nine yards on that first down carry before Rivera brings him down. Let's check it down below with Lisa. Well, Brent, if the Cowboys are going to get this done, they're going to have to do it without a Darius Bowman. It appears that he will not return to this game. I was able to ask three different players about his status and they all said that they didn't even see him in the locker room at halftime. Remember that video we saw him going into the locker room? Well, once he got up to that ramp that, where it goes uphill and out of the sight of the crowd, he actually needed help getting up that ramp. Right. Uh, it's a shame to hear that, Lisa. Darius Bowman is listed high among senior players as far as Sunday football is concerned. There's a fumble. Kansas signaling that they've got to let the officials sort it out here. Now, finally, the linesman points that the Jayhawks have possession. It's the first time tonight that we've seen Dantrell Savage fighting for extra yards, just trying that second and third effort, which he does such a good job of. The first time we've seen him, he gets his hand down. Hey, you know what? What do you think? I think they'll review this one. I do too. I think it's close. Yeah, I don't. I, I think just by reaching the ball out. Yeah, that is close. They're definitely going to take a peek at this one. Has to be indisputable. Yeah. Mortensen recovered it, and uh, there was a whistle. The officials quickly coming onto the field. Timeout. Oklahoma State. Now that gives First them time timeout. to take a look at it. Like Mike Gundy realizing right now is this third quarter is slipping away. Let's take another look at this. this uh, huge play. I don't know that you can turn over the call on the field. Hand is down. Is it indisputable enough to turn it over and say he was down? Now that's I don't, yeah, I don't think so. That's the question. Know. It's a it, remember it's caused it's called a fumble on the field. 
recovery Jayhawks okay and his knees not down his left his right, right hand the comes down his body yeah. Right, yeah and I think it's just when he's reaching for the football the only question I have is did he did he have possession as he reached out mm -hmm. and when the ball touched the surface did he still have control of the ball John Davidson is the replay official upstairs Cooper Castleberry the uh, referee and uh, first down now the officials are getting together it's like yeah, they're, they're bringing they're bringing the referee over Cooper is uh, fire up my gun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Gundy is down there wanting an explanation they were ready to go yeah out on the yeah. field I don't know that it, I don't know if you would want to use your challenge right here on that but I'm not sure you know it's uh, depends on what they've discussed as a staff as to when they uh, when they should use it the play is not being challenged yeah okay I want to take it on into the fourth quarter it's not going to be challenged but the booth can't they look at it well, and see you know, that it's questionable obviously they've had enough time yeah to have looked at it up there okay and uh, the replay officials uh, tell our truck Bill Bennell our producer that they've been happy with the looks that the Derek Motley our director sent their way so play on and a beautiful cutback for 11 yards Jake Sharp, the sophomore from Salinas, Kansas, on first down and unbeaten Kansas. Like a, I'm sorry, but like a lot of great teams, Brandon McAnderson and Jake Sharp give them a heck of a tandem in that backfield. Yes, they do. 11 more yards for this running attack. Well, McAnderson is the bigger more powerful back at 235 pounds and Jake Sharp comes in as a sophomore 190 pounds and has a heck of a burst they like to use him on the perimeter but he's showing a little bit of toughness here in these last two carries keeping it on the ground fine cut back and nine more yards. That's now the offensive leaders here, Bert, for the uh, Jayhawks. This Kansas offense is humming right along. 33 points tonight. It's for Kansas eight of ten games tonight this year. They've had over 30 points, and it's been a combination of Reesing, McAnderson, and how about tonight for Marcus Henry? Five catches, 158 yards. Looking for their tenth. Consecutive victory here tonight. Terrific fake. Incomplete. Looking for more touchdowns with Marcus Henry. And uh, he's tied the Jayhawk season record with five 100 yard receiving games. And that Bob Johnson had that mark back in 1983. It's, it's amazing all the records that the Jayhawks are putting up here. Well, Henry, and you're going to look there at Dexton Fields, who tried to get downfield. Desmond Briscoe continues to grow and mature. He had the big game last week against the Longhorns. Kerry Meyer comes in, number 10, a former quarterback, is kind of a possession slot receiver. It's a nice compliment here. McAnderson stuffed on that play as he went for the first down on third and short, and now leading 33-14. Coach Mangino over there will send the uh, substitutes out onto the field. Interesting. Fourth and short. Yeah, he's, go for he's it. Fourth and short, and he's right now not showing any sign. In fact, the hurry up offense here. Well, his his punting game didn't do much in the uh, in the first half. I'm going to say that. Let's see if he tries to draw him off, or they go. They're going to go ahead. And McAnderson picks up the first down. Powers their way behind the left side of that offensive line. I think Mark Mangino realizes he has a chance here to completely kill the will of Oklahoma State brings in the big back McAnderson lowers his shoulder and runs right through that Oklahoma State defense and 11 guys up tight to the line of scrimmage and it didn't matter I, st I, I think this is a good time for them to go down the field they've been running a lot trying to get it down vertically here. you said they settled for a 
four yard game Meyer the receiver on that play looking ahead on the Kansas schedule next week they will be home in Lawrence for their final home game for Mangino Iowa State is the opponent they'll be heavily heavily favored regardless of what happens here over the last quarter and 323 and then the showdown with Missouri has been moved to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City that's the following week that's the 24th and what a big game that now shapes up got a man wide open Meyer and he just overthrew him a little bit mm. Here's what I'm talking about Missouri a winner again today and then the winner of the Missouri assuming the Kansas wins tonight the winner of the Missouri Kansas game would then go to San Antonio and play the winner of the South and the shot there is Oklahoma right now because they already hold a win over the Longhorns earlier in the year third down now for the unbeaten Jayhawks reason checking the signal callers over on the sideline. Anderson cannot escape the linebacker and that ladies and gentlemen is Martel Van Zant the, the youngster we told you about at the top of the day the the deaf youngster who plays and plays with such heart he's a senior from Tyler Texas 6 1 210 pounds he told Lisa that there, there's the interpreter over there standing on the sideline he'll send a signal on to him, into him if they want him to move someplace he told Lisa that uh, listens to music. Putting down on the uh, punt return team. And so it'll be down. Parrish Cox makes the catch. We'll take a break. Time running out here in the third quarter, and the unbeaten Jayhawks are dominating. Well, there is Martel Van Zandt. He was recruited by Les Miles, who coached here before going over to LSU. and. Uh, Lisa's going to have more on uh, this remarkable story of this young football player. Right now, it's first down and 10 for Zach Robinson and the Cowboys, who find themselves behind 33 to 14. Okay. Complete for a first down, and we check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brent, you're right. It is a remarkable story. Martel Van Zandt's mother actually contracted chickenpox when she was pregnant, and that's why he was born deaf. But he has not let it slow him down at all. You can see on the sidelines, he has an interpreter with him for every meeting, uh, whenever he's on the sidelines, so that the coaches are able to communicate with him. And like you said, Les Miles recruited him, and Les Miles actually has a deaf brother. So unlike maybe other coaches, he was not put off by the fact that it was going to take a little extra work to actually be able to communicate with, with Martel. He sent him letters. And Martel said that he really appreciated that, that Les Miles saw him as someone who can. He didn't look at what he was not able to do. He saw what he can do. And the, the thing that he really says the most is, I don't want to be looked at as a deaf athlete. I'm an athlete first who happens to be deaf. But Brent, what surprised me was the fact that he not listens to music. He feels music. His favorite songs on his iPod. He said, I said, iPod? He says, oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I, I listen to all kinds of music and I just feel the beat and I can distinguish between country music and hip hop music, which is his favorite. His favorite artist, Soulja Boy, T.I., Fitty Cent, and Ludacris. Uh, wonderful story, Lisa. Thank you for that. 138 now. Second down and eight. Downfield juggled incomplete. And that was Savage. You've gone downfield as a receiver that time, and Joe Mortensen was the linebacker covering him. A very competitive linebacker, Joe Mortensen, and think about a middle linebacker trying to stay with Savage. That's a tough thing to do, a tough assignment. Right in the middle of the screen, just to the left, number eight tries to get vertically. Savage actually gets behind him, the ball underthrown, and that allows Mortensen to be able to get back into the play. If the ball was thrown downfield, that's a big game for Oklahoma State. Here's your third and eight now for the Cowboys. Final minute and a half in the third quarter. Four down. Zach takes off for the first down. Got it. Sophomore Zach Robinson from Littleton, Colorado. He replaced Bobby Reed, who opened the season as the quarterback. And uh, as Kirk reported earlier, one of the reasons that the coaches chose Zach is the mobility that we just saw. Yeah, the mobility, and I think it just gives this offense, he's given this offense a, a bit of a spark. And with Bowman down, I think the pressure puts 
it, even more of it falls onto his shoulders. Here comes the blitz. On the release. And there's Dez. He crosses the 40-yard line. So Dez Bryant has picked up the slack with Adarius Bowman not returning, as Lisa reported down below. Dez Bryant's had a terrific night. Des Bryant started the game early, made, made some plays, and has become the, the go-to guy. Great hands for the young freshman, 6'2", 210 pounds. They came with a blitz. Once they went, were unable to get to Robinson, it's a nice throw and a nice catch. And there you see Bowman in uh, street clothes, obviously unable to return, and we certainly hope that is not a serious knee injury. He is an NFL prospect. Zach going deep, end zone, touchdown! The Cowboys are alive. 39 yards. Zach Robinson, and there's the play you were looking for. That's the play we've been waiting for right there. Getting the ball downfield. It's been a tough thing for this Oklahoma State offense to try to get the ball behind the coverage of Kansas. Kansas has done a remarkable job tonight against this explosive Cowboy offense of keeping everything in front. But this time, Devereaux with a nice little nifty move to the outside and he took it to the post and a good throw by Zach Robinson. Within 12. Devereaux's first touchdown of the year. The 39 yarder. Folks you're watching ESPN on ABC. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to our meeting where I'd like to start. Oh, no! Hi could I get a cheeseburger some curly fries and a medium. Get some glasses. Our fries don't curl. Hey, happy socks. Call out a hedge? You don't do it anywhere else, so why do it at the game? Be a good sport. Brought to you by the Big 12 Conference and NCAA football. Yes, indeedy. Count those points off there, soldier. Let's go back to that touchdown, Kirk. Well, Tommy Devereaux in the slot here has a chance to get down the field right here, and he's going to get a little bit of move to the outside. It's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, which has been rare tonight. Kansas a bit confused. They have a few defenders on the opposite side. You can see it opened up the middle of the field on the back end, and that is a great matchup that Oklahoma State had. Daryl Stuckey, a safety, trying to stay with Tommy Devereaux. Folks, it's game on for the fourth quarter. Pistol Pete says, we ain't out of ammo yet. <laughs> Get bullet fired up down there. They got, they got some great traditions here. Bailey. Fields it at the goal line, and Kansas elects to come out. 25, 30, 35. To midfield, and there is why Marcus Herford is simply one of the best return men in the country. A 55 yard return under pressure. Under pressure, they came in leading the nation in returns of kickoffs, and it helped so much with their starting field position. How about the block by Brandon McAnderson late there to spring him? And Herford, all year has been setting up Kansas in great field position. And right when it looked like Oklahoma State ha might have a little bit of life, shoo, right down, now they're right into Oklahoma State territory, first and 10. And the unbeaten Jayhawks jump right back. The screen pass. Getting to the 40, picking up about five yards on that play, depending on where they spot it. Well, Oklahoma State might not be out of ammunition. The problem is, can their defense stop this Kansas offense to get the ball back to Zach Robinson? That will be the big question as the final seconds tick away here. 272 yards for Young Reezy here tonight. And we'll end the third quarter at Boone Pickens Stadium, Stillwater, Oklahoma. 33 21. ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
Can the Kansas Jayhawks stay undefeated? There are only two unbeaten teams left, and Kansas is one of them. The other one, Hawaii, I want to ask Kirk about Hawaii. They're getting ready to kick it off over there in Oahu, and they will be playing uh, Fresno here pretty soon on ESPN2. I go back with a nice cold one. Yeah, there you go. Watch cold one in that game. What, what do you make of make of Hawaii? I think they're going to climb if they go unbeaten and they'll be yeah. in the top 12. Well, this know. is really where their schedule starts, these last four games. They have some big ones coming up, Fresno State, Nevada on the road. Still have to play Washington. Still have Boise State, who's getting better and better. So if they're able to win out, I think they'll probably end up in a BCS, probably the Sugar Bowl. Second down and three after that great kickoff return by Hereford for the Jayhawks. Stumbling. So no chance there by Brandon McAnderson as he was slipping, taking the handoff. And here comes a comes a big third down as far as the Cowboys are concerned here, Kirk. Well, yeah, especially after that huge return. This Oklahoma State defense, I know they've given up 33 tonight, but if you were to look at the two deep on Oklahoma State and realize how depleted they are, they're playing with 12 or 13 guys. They can get the ball back to Zach Robinson. They have a little bit of hope. Here's the blitz. Incomplete. Fourth down. Now let's see if Mangino poops punts it. Tries to bury Oklahoma State. Here comes the punting team. Onto the field. Doesn't hesitate over there. It's a big play right there by Ricky Price, who allowed the tight end fine to make the catch, but then came in physically and knocked the ball away. Forces his fourth down. Tucker's punt is going to roll out of bounds well inside the 20 and uh, well I have a moment I want to pass along uh, condolences to Mike Gottfried and his family. He uh, lost a brother this week and uh, his brother uh, worked with us uh, several years on Saturday night football and he was a booth spotter for Mike Gottfried eight years uh, up here in the booth and he passed away this this last Thursday evening. And uh, Johnny Gottfried was 59 years old, and I know how close he was to Mike. And uh, all of us here send along our condolences to the the Gottfried family. First down and ten for Zach Robinson and the Cowboys. We've not called Pettigrew's name very much tonight. They're probably going to look to try to get him the football. The keeper, 40. Midfield, Zach Robinson being pushed out of bounds as Talib pushes the quarterback out of bounds, but that's a 57 yard burst. Big play here by Robinson, a little zone read. John Larson, the defensive end, is on the edge right here. He comes down. Robinson's going to go around. And wait till you see the block by the big tight end, Pettigrew. Defensive end comes down. You see this every week in college football. A nice block by Pettigrew. And this gives you an idea of what Zach Robinson can do in the open field. To the 32-yard line. Robinson checks the sideline for the play. Pump fake to the right. Now it goes down deep. And it is pulled down at the six yard line. Complete to Jason. So Duncan Davis goes up in the air. And makes a splendid grab. It's first and goal, Kirk. Well, after a big play, Bo this time with Bowman down, Davis has to step up. And Zach Robinson just threw it up there, I think, to Des Bryant. But Davis came over to make the catch. Underneath. And it'll be second down and goal. Savage. Well, he, he is well named. He is a savage runner. I want to tell you, he's about as tough an hombre. As we've seen this year. I want to go back on that catch by Davis. And you're right, he's a freshman from Mark, Texas. And he chose the Cowboys after considering Arizona, Baylor, Kansas was one of the teams in Texas AM. 6'5. He needed every inch there to make that catch. 
Keep it. Touchdown, Cowboys. Zach Robinson. Game on in Stillwater. This is more like the Oklahoma State offense that we've seen all year with Zach Robinson and Dantrell Savage in the lineup where they, they get you on your heels a bit. And that's the first time Mark Mangino's defense felt a little bit out of sorts. And it all goes back to the big run by Zach Robinson to get his team out of their own territory. And he went downfield off that option attack. Tacked on by Bailey. Bullock loves it. He loves One of the great traditions here. Cowboys are back in business because of their quarterback. A 57-yarder and then the touchdown, 33-28. Wish for the new Dell Inspiron 1520. Powered by Intel Centrino Duo Processor Technology. Dell, yours is here. Well, a reminder on Wednesday, catch one of the most unique shows on television. With one murder, four wives, and a threesome, this could be the toughest case yet. Modern fairy tale with mystery, romance, and a touch of magic. A whodunit with a twist. Pushing daisies. That's that whodunit. An all-new episode Wednesday, 8 Eastern on ABC at 7 Central. Here's a shocker, folks. Maryland, Maryland 42, BC 21. Wow. Fourth quarter. That is a big shocker. Herb Street. That was Herb. last week. Oh, yes, that was I think they, I think they, <laughs> there's a hush that's come over the BC fan base. Here we go. Now we're back down to five. Kansas, one of the two unbeatens. Big series on the road. Dan Bailey will kick it off. Stillwater crowds alive. Remember, Herford is so dangerous back. In the end zone. Will he come out? Yes, he will. The 10 yard line. Not down to Cowboys. Swarm all over him. And we swarm all over Matt Weiner, Matt. All right, Brent, Sports Center Minute powered by Vizio. If you haven't heard by now, the number one team in the country lost today. Illinois beat Ohio State thanks to four touchdown passes by Juice Williams. They took advantage of three Todd Beckman interceptions. Tim Tebow has accounted for six touchdowns tonight against South Carolina. He has 41 of the season, guys. When this weekend began, he had 35 more than 70 1A teams. Amazing numbers. And here, first down and 10 for the Jayhawks. Crowd as noisy as it's been all night. And McAnderson just takes off and quiets him for the moment with a 12 yard burst. Anderson now climbing toward 100 yards rushing. Reason has thrown for 267. Henry has 158 yards receiving here tonight. There's your leaders. Going to give him another chance, but there was a whistle. They're, they're in their indie package, and I think they even caught the officials off guard. They're trying Absolutely. to. He's upset. I don't well, blame him. Don't blame he's him. trying to create some tempo here. Yeah, they're supposed to be ready to go yeah. in that situation. I don't blame him, Mark. First down and 10. Reason checks that sideline. McAnderson comes right back at the middle. Nine more yards for him. Climbing toward 100, rushing on the night. Savage has 93 yards into the lead, rushing for the Cowboys. That's great blocking by the offensive line. We're going to single out Derek Fine, the big tight end, does a good job off to your right. See how he seals the big defensive end, Fountain, and it opens it up. But this offensive line, a lot of times, doesn't get the attention it deserves. Play very, very well as a unit, playing good tonight. Inside handoff, there's 100 for the night, plus on that burst for a first down. Brandon McAnderson climbs past 100. The backs against the wall. Crowd starts to come alive. They go to Br a big Brandon McAnderson three straight times. And again, the offensive line. Look at the hole. Really isn't anything fancy. It's a zone play off to the right. Use the vision of McAnderson, but it's a humongous. 
humongous hole. Three straight plays by that Kansas hole line. And Kirk, Jake Sharp comes in now, and he got that carry for a yard on that replay that you showed us of Mike Anderson. Anthony Collins, number 78, the junior from Beaumont, Texas, play, number 78. Did a good block, and uh, he's one of the better, better linemen in the conference. Chet Hartley was the lineman, number 79, who was lacing up his shoe. Well, you see number one, Jake Sharp, right to the right of Reese, who checks over at the sideline now, second down and nine. Under pressure, penalty flag. The umpire throwing that in the area we're holding is generally called. Interesting decision for Mike Gundy. Oh, they're going to call it Kansas clapping. Maybe it's defensive lineman got his hand up in the face of a Kansas really? player. Could be. Personal foul, yep. illegal hands to the face. You're exactly Number 96 right on the defense. Yeah, good call. That's Chatham. And an automatic first down. Jeray Chatham. The junior from Houston and a big penalty that not only the yards but the first down and they takes him way across midfield. Oh, this is the play of the game right in the middle of the screen. Yeah, he got him right gets up. His, gets his hand right way up, up helmet, yep, yeah. way up into the, the face, face mask. mask. Yep. That's the play of the game. You're, you're looking at either a third and long if they declined a, a penalty if it would have been against Kansas or at the very least a, a situation that puts Kansas back in their own territory and now first and ten. Fourth penalty, 50 yards in penalties against the Cowboys. Two for 14 against the Jayhawks. Reezy, pump fake. Looks down the middle, complete. Goes back to Marcus Henry, who has had a sensational night. And here's the timing, the continuity of this offense. Todd Reezy. Been great all night. Watch the pump fake. Boom! A little bit of a fake right there gets the corner out of position. Lacey and, and gives his receiver enough room to be able to work with Marcus Henry. Actually, that time caught the other corner out of position, but nonetheless, a nice big open there for Henry to make the play. 182 yards after that 24 yard gain. Reese back, fires left side, dropped incomplete. And that was Meyer, the intended target. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Jayhawks. Up by five, 33 28 here at the 10 43 mark. And Gino would dearly love to put this on two scores. He'd like to finish this off with a touchdown, not settle for the field goal. Looking over for the confirmation again. We talked about how. Ed Warner from, calls the game from upstairs. The offensive coordinator communicates to the sideline. Reezing rolling the pocket on an option. Look, here's McAnderson on the juggle and won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Down at the 20-yard line is Ricky Price. He was uh, playing that safety and playing it with a lot of authority tonight, the junior from Tyler, Texas. Well, he may, he's been making some plays tonight, and this time, it, it's not as if there's anybody there to block him, but it's his reaction instantly coming down to fill the alley off of the option. He's worked all week on that, gets up into the face of McAnderson, who's had a pretty good drive here, but if you can get to him early before he builds his momentum, you can slow him down. And shorthanded linebacker, so Price actually has been lining up in that Sam spot throughout much of the night. Reese, in zone, no, short of it, but it's caught again. There is that man, Marcus Henry. That's a first and goal with this grab. Rock Chuck Jayhawk on this one. How about Henry tonight, the game that he has had? Seven catches. He's closing in on 200 yards. He gets his hands under the ball. Ball is thrown down away where he can make the play, and that's a great catch this time by Marcus Henry. Nick Anderson pounds for a yard. Around the five-yard line, and there is... Young Henry, seven catches, 195 yards. His career high here tonight, averaging 27.9 yards a catch. Has already scored two touchdowns. You see Mike Anderson with 110 yards rushing. The Jayhawks trying to finish this off with a touchdown. 9.27 to go. Cowboys would dearly settle for a field goal right now. Racing. Drop it in short. 
They won't get the touchdown on this play. Desmond Briscoe, the freshman from Dallas. Here comes your third and goal for Reese and the Jayhawks. A dangerous call there. Reesing trying to time up the screen. Looks off to the right there as a decoy and comes back. And by the time he came back, he had a couple of Oklahoma State defenders closing in on Briscoe. This drive started at their own 11 yard line. They've moved right down the field. Tim Beckman, the defensive coordinator, who was on the staff at Ohio State last year, will be to come up here with a stop and third and goal by his defensive players. Reesing. Trying to buy time. In zone. Caught. Touchdown, Jayhawks. And that is the star number one, Marcus Henry. His third touchdown grab of the evening. Brent, I happen to be watching Marcus Henry the whole way. I like how he didn't give up on the play. He's kind of saying, I'm open, I'm open. His quarterback's about to throw it away. But because Marcus Henry did not give up on the play, he's able to make a touchdown. That's the second time tonight we've seen Henry and Reese connect when the play is broken down. Quentin Moore sort of lost him and he was staying ahead of the free safety and ran across the end zone like you pointed out, Kurt. So a career night. And the Jayhawks unbeaten. They need every yard and every point from him. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company plane. Visit Southwest.com. The Nissan Titan, proud presenter of the 2007 Heisman Trophy. To cast your vote, go to the HeismanVote.com. And Dr. Pepper, with 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. He was one of the best ever, number 21. Barry Sanders had all the moves. I did a bowl game with Oklahoma State in which he could not get on the field because of a running back by the name of Thurman Thomas. But once he did, he never looked back. Heisman Trophy here in Stillwater, then on to greatness with the Detroit Lions of the National Football League. And there tonight is a comparison, Kirk, of our two quarterbacks. Well, we've seen Robinson heat up here of late, but Todd Reesing has been consistent throughout this whole game. He's 27 to 39, over 300 yards, three touchdowns. And with this win, if they're able to hold on and get to 10 wins, his name's been on the fringe for the Heisman. I think tonight, if they win this game, he starts to definitely get more in the, more on the radar for Heisman Trophy discussions. The Jayhawks closing in on history. Trying to get to 10 and 0, and we take a look at the Pacific life Game summary. Marcus Henry with a career night receiving, Kurt. Well, Todd Reesing found him early. This is one of the plays where it broke down, and Henry didn't give up on that play, and he had his, his first touchdown. Bowman went down. Darius Bowman went down. I think this affected the continuity of Oklahoma State's offense, but Zach Robinson, the last drive, he came alive. He made some big plays. Just when it looked like Kansas was on the ropes, Marcus Henry again comes up on that last drive, 89 yards for the touchdown. 8.26 to go, down 40-28. Zach sets the screen with Savage. And he's to the 21-yard line. And Joe Mortensen, they did a poll of all the players at Kansas, and they asked him, who's the most competitive player on the team? Joe Mortensen was the winner. He received 18 votes, and James McClinton 13, and Mortensen's been a competitor here tonight. Second down and nine for the Cowboys. Here comes the blitz, picked up, incomplete. USC Cal, let's check in with Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Brent, as you know, despite two losses, USC still has plenty to play for, and they've taken a lead at Cal. Chauncey Washington's having a huge day. This is Stephon Johnson, though, with the quick touchdown there. It's now 24-17. Colt Brennan's thrown his 120th career touchdown pass to give Hawaii an early lead. His next touchdown pass will tie Ty Detmer's career mark. Well, well, yeah, should break that by the end of the first quarter. <laughs> In the next five minutes, we go for an update. He's got his third down now for Robinson. Needing to move the chains, fires, intercepted, picked off by Akeem Tlaib. The chatterbox of the Jayhawks 
may have sealed the Cowboys' doom. Look at him talking. And the Jayhawk fans who have traveled to Stillwater, they are loving it. Akeem Tlaib is waiting for his opportunity to make a play. He's received a lot of attention this week because of the game that he had last week against Nebraska. This time he undercuts the throw by Robinson. Appeared to me that he looked into the eyes of Zach Robinson, baited him, got him to throw, and then cut, as I said, right underneath the throw. And that interception puts Kansas in a position to wrap this game up. Well, what a night. That's the third Oklahoma State turnover of the night. As McAnderson breaks for the end zone, he stopped just short of it. Down at the two-yard line. You look at the things, the things that separate, and let's hope he's not seriously injured. McAnderson. Can't that. Can't afford to have no, no. McAnderson go down. And boy, this, off, this offensive line and him oh, running he was, he from was behind. He was a little backwards, yeah. wasn't he? Let's hope that he's okay. Yeah, I absolutely okay. agree. He's going to come over to the sideline. And, uh, what a night. There he is, a night he's had. And uh, remember last week, four touchdowns. And that 76-point uh, explosion against Nebraska, the most points ever scored. So uh, Jake Sharp checks in. Cowboys show blitz in zone. And that time they could not get the it heck? in the hands. Of Throw it up to Henry, Henry again. Right? And, uh, now there's, there's the big fellow right there. Now. And I tell you, what a job he has done. Let's, let's think about... Uh, Coaches of the year in the Big 12. Let's just start with that. It, it, there's the man that should that's, be at the very top of the national, uh, national coach. Well, yeah, he's, he's on the list. Going home. Yeah. McAnderson's back on the field. And that's that's a great sight. Oh, without a doubt, Mark Mangino has to be one of the first names you think of when you think of the national coach of the year. He, when they win this game tonight, they move to 10-0. Want to reiterate? It's the first time since 1899 that they've been 10 and 0. Looking man. for more. Yep. Going home to play Iowa State and Lawrence. Kansas City, the showdown with Missouri. Can't tell you how much I admire McAnderson. Coming back and barging toward the end zone. You can't help but love not only McAnderson, but this team. It's, it's, it, it is the epitome of team because they don't care who's getting the headlines. They don't care who's getting all the attention. They just want to play the game. They're a confident team that plays watch smart me. every week. He says, watch me. Yeah, he's going to make the signal. Interesting. Timeout. What's a timeout with two seconds? Watch me. Where's the ball? What, what yard line? <laughs> Pretty good out. Audio, audio, audio down, down there. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yes, indeed. Well, reminder now, stay tuned for your late local news immediately after the game over most of these ABC stations. And, of course, over on ESPN Sports Center, we'll have uh, analysis of this game, and they will show you the highlights of another number one team collapsing today. Ohio State beaten at home by Illinois. The fighting Illini, and that, in all likelihood, means the end of the Buckeyes' dream to advance to New Orleans and play back-to-back -back national championship games. However, at high noon next Saturday, the battle for the Rose Bowl is on in Ann Arbor. Even though Michigan and Ohio State both lost, they will play for the right to go to Pasadena next week in Ann Arbor. And remember, it is high noon. So the Wolverines have lost three times. They can still make it to Pasadena. The Buckeyes have had a heartbreak today at home, but they can still make it to a BCS Bowl, just not the national championship. They can make it to the Rose Bowl. And because I was there, Kirk with Dick Vermeil the last time they made it when they beat Arizona State and Jake Plummer. That was yep. Joe Germain and the guy. 1996. Looked like Jake Plummer had the heroics there, and then Joe Germain came down the field there and found David Boston in the end zone. Well, sitting on a 12, he wants to make this a 15 rather than uh, gamble on a uh, on a touchdown here. So it's fourth down and goal. Webb has trotted on out to the field. Uh, 
Uh, I think he's going to bring it back a few yards is what what's happening here to give him a little bit better angle. Yep. He's over on the right hash and in a little bit too tight. He let the clock run down and uh, he's going to give Webb just a little bit more daylight on this I would think. Now Oklahoma State on the other hand may say let's decline that baby. Right. Definitely needs a little bit more room on the right hash. He's at the half yard line. Because they didn't center it up, remember. They were still going for the touchdown. Yeah. So they didn't try to center the ball. They weren't thinking. Delay of game goal. on the offense. Five yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. We're trying to catch up. All right, here we go now. Webb. Slices it through. Put it on a 15, 43, 28. Unbeaten Kansas. That's where you're watching ESPN on ABC. Now, now when you're the head coach of an unbeaten football team like Mark Mangino, you can still have cable board. Now you see, you're, yeah, not, you're not gonna strap that on the belt. You just follow me as I walk around. And there's cable. You know, folks, one of my dear friends up in Chicago, the late Abe Gibron. And when I look at Mangino down on the sideline, he reminds me of, uh, of looking at Big Abe when uh, when he coached the Chicago Bears. He coached the great Kansas player, Bobby Douglas, uh, who I'm sure has been watching the, uh, the Jayhawks up in the uh, Chicago area. And uh, certainly a lot of fans remember him. Nolan Cromwell, Big John Riggins, the Kansas Comet, Gale Sayers, all of those. Great names, John Hadle coming out of Kansas, and here's a, here's a team about to accomplish something that those great players never did. They're about to go to 10 and 0. As we take a look at the ESPNU All-State standings, Kirk, uh, take it away and tell us uh, what you think is going to happen here, Frank. Well, I think obviously Ohio State is out of the picture. LSU and Oregon, you would assume, will move up to one and two. Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. Amazing. The Big 12 with three weeks remaining yeah, and a lot of them playing one another Kansas and Missouri play on the 24th we'll be there in Kansas City and then early December Big 12 championship game the winner of that game against Oklahoma and depending on what happens with LSU and Oregon you might be talking about a BCS championship at stake Robinson going downfield and there is a very talented freshman what a night Des Bryant has had especially with the Darius Bowman being injured and he has uh, he certainly has been the leading weapon here tonight 155 yard game and a touchdown for the Cowboys that's 39 yards and Des Bryant has shown what he can do he's got the size and the athletic ability and that time had a chance to go up against Tlaib and made the play squeezing out a couple more yards here is Savage well, let's take a look at the remaining schedule here for our uh, top BCS teams, Kurt. Well, I think LSU is going to have a chance to have some high-profile games against Arkansas and Darren McFadden on national television, SEC title game. We'll get back to that in a second. We want to see this pass by Zach downfield. He almost pulled away by Des. Boy, Bryant's got uh, some future as we go back and take a look. I'm going to tell you something, Kirk, about that. Arkansas is going to give LSU all they want with McFadden. Yeah, and it's it's in Baton Rouge, what help, which helps. But Oregon, you know, they're playing at Arizona. They're playing at UCLA. They're going to be heavy favorites in all three of those games. Doesn't mean they're going to win them all, but they'll be heavy favorites. Kansas, we talked about the big game with Missouri, maybe a Big 12 championship game. And Oklahoma, anytime you go to go, to go against uh, Mike Leach and Lubbock, be a little bit weary of that, but the big one with Oklahoma State, the Big 12 title. You know, Stoops and that Sooner staff will be pulling for Kansas to get to that Big 12 championship game undefeated. That would help them in the computers if they can come away with a victory in that game. That would really move them up, and they sure would assault would. one or two. Yep. I'm going to tell you, this is going to be some vote the way things are closing oh, yeah. in now. And, and now we're really going to find out how the Harris poll and the coaches poll how it's going to affect these teams because the polls account for two thirds of the BCS standings and now with all these one loss teams jumbled how they'll vote in these last three weeks will be crucial. That play was stopped. And the crowd is booing because of the uh, completion timeout. but he had called, called timeout. My Kansas. Kansas had called the before timeout the ball was snapped. before it was snapped. So something they saw they didn't like. 
And Gino using the timeout, and we will take a break. Reminder on Monday, look for an all new Samantha Who, the number one comedy four weeks in a row. Christina Applegate stars in this year's smash hit, Samantha Who. All new right after a big one, Dancing with the Stars. There's a pretty good dancing going on right here now in store. So that'll be this Monday. You'll see that show on ABC, 9.30 Eastern. Oh, mercy. Can't be fun at the old uh, ballpark. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Here we go. Four, Four down. down. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Zach checks the sideline. Hands it off. Got a first down. Savage. Thrown down at the 25 yard line. And of course, uh, reminded about after the game, late local news for most of these ABC stations and over on ESPN. You will see the highlights of Illinois going into Columbus. And upsetting Ohio State as the stunners continue. Robinson to the end zone. Broken up by Tlaib. Great play by number three in the end zone as he battled Des Bryant. Tlaib at 6'2", 205 pounds. What a matchup with Des Bryant. Same size at 6'2". You're going to go up, try to get position. Tlaib actually is beaten on the play, but the ball is underthrown and allows Tlaib the ability to go back and get the ball to knock it away. If the ball's thrown in front of Brian, it's a touchdown. He had the, the all-conference corner beaten on that play. Second down and 10. Zach trying to get the corner. Ball comes out. And uh, there's an Oklahoma State player. Got it before it went out of bounds. Winding the clock over there. Can't tell you how impressed I am with this Kansas defense and the way they've been able to contain Zach Robinson for the most part. This is a dangerous right pitch. off Savage's yeah, mask and Newton gets over there. Ball stays in bounds. Look Oops, at that. Underneath. Look at that. Covered it with his legs. Gonna hatch it. Third down. Hey, we got we got a review. The previous oh. play. Well, it's worth it's worth taking a. Uh, it look at, but I thought it was a bad pitch right off well upper part of the face mask and uh, recovered by Newton before it went out of bounds. When a quarterback runs the option and he gets stretched all the way out almost to the sideline, he's he's past the hash mark. He's closing in on the sideline. He probably should have just lowered his shoulder and just taken oh, the he loss. Touched it with his hand and batted it forward. Yeah, he, he didn't expect. You're exactly right. No, I mean he's, he's just he's just trying yeah. to survive. The yeah. ball comes. He's two feet away from yeah. Roberts. I'm, I, I, I walk away from this game more impressed with Kansas than you expected than, than when I came to the stadium. I, right. I thought, you know what, this, we're going to find out more about Kansas. They're up. It's a fun story. They're nine and zero. Love Mark Mangino. They're efficient. They're smart. But they came into this game against a high-powered offense, and they, I think they've made a very strong statement to the country about how real they are. Yeah, I, I think the ball once it got to Savage. I don't think he deliberately batted the ball forward. I think his hand came up. The ball got knocked forward. Well, I, you know, the thing they probably are looking at, is it possible that it was a forward pass? Let's see how he pitched it out here. Hit by the hand, and I thought the running back was behind him, so yeah, I thought it was a, yeah. a backward, a lateral. Touched it with his hand, and then uh, Newton. But we'll see, what, we'll see what the fellas upstairs have got to uh, say about that the ruling on the field was a backwards pass that was muffed and then recovered by Oklahoma State the ruling on the field is confirmed okay so we play on here 332 43 28 the Jayhawks came in averaging 46.2 points a game second in the nation in scoring and they've put up 43 here The feel-good story of the year in college football, if you will. And Robinson scrambling on this third down, fires in zone. And fourth down coming up.
the quietest man in the ballpark has been Brandon Pettigrew tonight. We've not seen Pettigrew, but I know that Davis this time is there. He has his man beaten early on the play. Chris Harris, Davis wanted the football right away, but Zach Robinson didn't see him. But we've got to see. We've been calling Pettigrew, waiting to see him. Shut he doesn't, out. doesn't have a catch Shut tonight. Out. One of the Here top tight ends in the country. Fourth and six. Comes in underneath. And there's his first catch of the night. Brandon Pettigrew, the junior from Tyler, Texas. Now they're frustrated in booing because of the spot. Pettigrew, Brent, as you started to say, looks like, depending on the spot, it looks like a first down. But Pettigrew came in averaging 17 yards a catch. And they just had not been able to get him the football. A Darius Bowman went out with an injury. Uh, Dantrell Savage has uh, had a big night with 106 yards. He's been the mainstay, and uh, Zach Robinson has passed for 276, and he has run for another 90 yards. And uh, now it's uh, timeout has been called here. Oklahoma State did this a little earlier. I, I'm just curious to see where the, you can see where the spot is now. I mean, it's at about the 15 and a half yard line. See where Pettigrew comes down. He didn't really stretch the ball. He didn't try to stretch for the first down. If the yellow line was accurate, it looked like he was a little shy when the shoulder went down with the football. Now, maybe at least a measurement, right? Yeah, well, you know, I, that's I think what I would have deserved to measure. I'm sort of surprised when I looked down yeah. there and they weren't uh, they weren't measuring it. And uh, they're gonna look at they're gonna try to challenge the spot. Yeah, sure, you can do that. You can challenge the spot. Gundy kept his challenge. Remember, field was that the runner was down before he made the first down. The play is being challenged. Yeah, absolutely, I I think at this point, no use taking into the locker room. No, no. No, I, I you might as well go ahead and take a look at it. I think that uh, Mike Gundy is doing the, the right thing for his team here to see if he can uh, get the first down and uh, and keep it going. But it, let's let us take another look at it. it. It's hard for me to tell. I just thought with the shoulder, it's really where the football is. Yeah, watch watch the football where the shoulder goes down. Now. See, I thought the football was shy of the yellow, but. Um, it's hard to tell. And it has to be indisputable for him to turn it over. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Yep. First down for Kansas. Here we go. Boys didn't wait. Make quick call and they're ready to go. 309. 10 and 0. Rock, shock, solid Jayhawk, huh? What a story. To the 20 yard line is Brandon McAnderson. And let's go back and take a look at this graphic for undefeated seasons for the uh, for the Jayhawks. Let's go back to 1891, 99, <laughs> 1908, 1923, and uh, been plenty of tiebreakers, I guess, back in the year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, about to become 10 and 0 for I, the first time since that. I think this is the story of the year. Oh, I, I think Kansas at 10 and 0 is, is got to be. There are a lot of crazy things that have happened, but for them to get to 10 and 0 and on their way to accomplish more this year has got to be one of the biggest stories this year by far. Yeah, and uh, let's go back on where they have gone on the road. Let's let's forget how they prepared for the season. Yes, the non-conference slate was a little weak, but and Gino and the guys they went to Colorado. Remember, that's the team that beat Oklahoma out there in Boulder, all right? And Gino and the Jayhawks won that in 1914. They stayed on the road the next week, and I cannot stress how tough it is on that second road trip, back-to-back -back road trips. They went down to play Texas A&M. They won that 1911, and they came in here tonight, and it's 43-28. They they have answered the bell. Well, they they have now won four road games this year, and I said earlier. The last five years combined, they won four road games. Now Kansas State was the was the other one that yeah. won a little bit earlier. Wins the table and gets to the national championship, and USC becomes a Rose Bowl team. 
They're going to be there, 10 and 2. Fumble, muffed it. And let's see if it comes back to the spot and they give it to the Jayhawks. But I believe the, the Cowboys muffed that punt. Parrish Cox was back. Let's let's take a look at this. They'll bring it back to the spot. Yeah. Ball just hit right off his face mask. Yeah, How about no the pressure. freshman Chris Harris? And yeah, what a great scoop up, there, right? Covered They'll by just Kansas, but cannot be advanced. Can't be advanced because it's, it's a muff. first down. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. I love this. The winner of the USC Arizona State game. Yes. Will play the winner. Of the yeah, Michigan Ohio State game in the Rose Bowl, and Oregon will go to New Orleans to play in the I think, BCS I think that's, that's because that's very logical. Yeah. Very logical. Yeah. I, if Oregon wins out, you got to believe they're going to make it to the national championship game in New sure. Orleans at this point. Exactly. And if USC is able to, USC Arizona State. They've got to beat Arizona yeah. State. Both games. You know, that's Both a, teams I think are a Thursday night game. game. Yeah, it's Down a Thursday. In, uh, night. Yep. Okay, it's over. Thanksgiving night. And uh, then, then it will be the big to Miss Reese. Comes out of the victory formation, and we're going to honor the two quarterbacks. We certainly could honor Marcus Henry, who had a sensational game receiving. But Todd Reesing here, uh, Kirk. Three or four for the Heisman Trophy. And the players from both teams are uh, coming out the middle of the field for uh, for the handshake. And Reesing and the guys. Yeah, why not? 10 and 0. Iowa State coming up in Lawrence. It'll be senior day. And then on to Kansas City. And the showdown with Missouri. Coach Gundy and Mangino out in the middle of the field. And congratulations to uh, to the Jayhawks as they head back to Lawrence and let us go down to Lisa. Thanks, Brent. Coach, you were saying going into the half that you were a little disappointed that you had to settle for a couple of field goals. That was not the case in the second half. What was the difference? Well, I, I thought our, our coaches did a nice job with our offensive players making adjustments at the half. We just felt like we just had to make some plays, and the kids came out in the second half, executed, did a good job. It, it took the effort of all the kids out there on the field doing their doing their part. Certainly, Marcus Henry made some plays, as did your quarterback, Todd Reesing, over 300 yards, three touchdowns. What impressed you most about him tonight? Well, uh, Todd, once again, he's, he's a great competitor and plays hard all the time. Marcus Henry made plays. You know, he's an Oklahoma kid. He's from Walton, Oklahoma, so this game meant a lot to him. He said to us before the game, 9-0, it's been a lot of fun. How's 10-0 feel? 10-0's pretty good. we just got to keep going now, Lisa. Thanks a lot, Coach. You're Congratulations. Uh, the big smile. Coach Mangino and the Jayhawks have done it again. 43-28 over